Welcome to the second day of the HPED Expo. Today we'll have the oral presentations of our evaluation class students no, from HP 231. Um, and today we've invited um, two members of the panel of judges. No, so para talagang serious. Uh, uh, sige na, evaluators kung gusto nyo. <laughs> um, so first we have... Um, our first member of the panel is um, a, a professor at the College of Allied Medical Professions. Um, she's a very good friend of mine and my classmate. Um, she has a master's degree in education from UP Diliman. And she's also, she's my classmate because she's pursuing her PhD in education. We're in the same program in educational research and evaluation. She's in her dissertation uh, phase right now, just finished. Having her to topic approved, <laughs> so mas malapit lapit na siya. Um, so we'd like to welcome Miss Mia Rotor. No. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, uh, you're all familiar with our next member. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course, uh, none other than the, uh, the dean of the entity CHP, Doctor Nemuel Fautagano. Oh, parang may dalakang pala niya. Of course. So, welcome and thank you for coming. We also want to welcome everybody who's watching uh, the Facebook live feed, <laughs> um, of especially our students in Cebu. I hope uh, you're logged in, you're watching. Um, uh, before we begin, we'd like, we have seven presenters today, not all presenting their um, their evaluation projects that they've been working on for the last semester. Um, the, each one will have uh, 10 minutes to present their, their projects. And then after that, we'll give uh, about maybe seven minutes to 10 minutes of time to, for our judges to ask questions. And for the audience, if you also have um, questions, clarifications, or comments and suggestions for our presenters, that will be... Uh, also good. Okay. So without further ado, let's uh, begin with our first presenter who will be um, presenting to us her project entitled CIPP Evaluation Model for Evaluation of a Continuing Dental Education Course in Oral Surgery for the General Dentist, Dr. Anne Vanessa Florento. Good morning. Um, my topic. Uh, so uh, my evaluation topic. Uh, the title is CIPP evaluation model for uh, model for evaluation of a continuing dental education course in oral surgery for the general dentists. So as an introduction. Minor oral surgery is a necessary component in dentistry. So in fact, in the Philippine setup, it is one of the most widely practiced branch of dentistry. So unfortunately, the practice of this field of dentistry is mostly limited to the extraction of teeth. So there are several other aspects of this field that can enhance the dentist's practice of their profession. So the program that is being evaluated, so a background, uh, as a background, so this program is designed to arm the dentist with the basic principles and skills to perform minor dental procedures. So the program of offers the different aspects of diagnostic and treatment management of various minor oral surgical procedures that can be done in a clinical setup. So it aims to provide additional perspectives in the practice of dentistry in general and minor oral surgery specifically. So the purpose and research questions of the study. So this study aims to evaluate the postgraduate continuing education in oral surgery for the general dentists using the CIPP model. 
So the following are the research questions. So under the context, first question, what are the needs and the expectations of the general dentists in a basic oral surgery training program? In the input, is the content of the program relevant to the needs of the students? Under the process, what are the areas in the program that need improvement in terms of teaching strategies and evaluation to better meet the needs and expectations of the students? And under the product, are the students able to meet their needs and expectations in the program? So objectives is to determine the needs and expectations of the students or general, general dentists in the basic oral surgery training program to determine if the content of the program is relevant to the needs of the dentists, to identify areas in the program that need improvement in terms of the strategies and evaluation to better meet the needs and expectations of the students, and to, the, to identify if the students were able to meet the needs and expectations from the program. So in summary, um, under the evaluation questions, these are the data that are needed under the context, the needs and expectations of the students, the data collection method and procedure. Um, actually, for everything, I used a survey using a questionnaire. So I used, the instrument that I used is a questionnaire for everything, for the context, input, process, and the product. Data analysis used for the context is descriptive statistics. In the input, the same, descriptive statistics. And in the process, descriptive statistics and content analysis. And same thing in the product. Sampling procedures and participants. This study was carried out with 10 students from the last three batches of the original, of the oral surgery course. The survey through questionnaire were distributed to 22 respondents. It consists of closed-ended and open-ended questions. Only 10 of them were able to return the questionnaire. Participants are mostly female, which is 60%, and the male is 40% of the respondents. The age bracket mainly belongs to 26 to 30 year old bracket, meaning the age group is relatively young. And in terms of the numbers of number of years in their practice, majority of the respondents are in their early years of dental practice, which is between zero to five years. So that means most students who graduate are incompetent or less competent in performing basic oral surgery procedures. For the result, under the context, um, um, under the title of the need for a postgraduate oral surgery course, it resulted that most students or um, uh, most students or 70% of the respondents, they strongly agreed that there is a need for a postgraduate oral surgery course. And when asked, what is their preferred postgraduate oral surgery program? Most of them chose a short oral surgery course compared to a full full time residency training program, and none chose the master's degree. And when they were asked what is the reason for enrolling in a postgraduate surgery program, most of them um, replied that they want to gain more confidence to improve their skills and for um, career advancement. Now, under the preferred teaching strategy, so most answer that they want or they prefer a discussion slash presentation, actual case requirement, and laboratory or workshops. A few wanted um, collection of examples, journal review, and lecture. This is supported by an open-ended question wherein most answered, like in number one, um, the case presentation and different topics were releva relevant and profound knowledge in certain condition or, or cases were learned 
It makes the clinician aware of the possible scenarios that can happen or could happen if she or he will encounter such, case, such cases. Another responded answer that the hands-on exercise is a, great, is a great tool for us to apply and remember the topic for the day. The third responded like the discussion of actual cases, activity parts, lectures, and discussion. And when they were asked to assess their skills in oral surgery, the expected uh, mean is 3.5. All the items with a weighted mean of 3.5 and up is considered as strength. All below is considered as their weakness that needs to be improved. So the students are competent. The result shows that the students are competent in the fields of dental anesthesia, delivery, and suturing, while all the others they are uh, less competent in all other areas of minor oral surgery. So thus, it strengthens the need to um, improve their skills in this basic oral surgery course. Now, under the input, the program content evaluation, it shows that the respondents generally agree that the co course content offered in the program is relevant to their needs in an oral surgery program based on the weighted mean. Now, under the process, it also shows that the implement, implementation of the program, they agree that the strength is in the areas of the trainers are knowledgeable and helpful, and the students are engaged. The weakness of the program lies in the method of instruction, student evaluation, and the length of training. Although, on the average, um, they generally agree that uh, the program implementation um, is acceptable. This is also supported by answers on the open-ended questions wherein um, uh, they are one of the student or one of the respondent want, wanted more special case, they want more topics to cover and to increase the length of the time of the course and because of time constraints, so they feel that um, lesser areas are covered and they wanted more topics to, to be discussed. Now, and under the process, because in the course or in the program, they are required to perform an actual case requirement. Out of the 10, only one was able to perform the actual case requirement, which is a surgical removal of um, impacted tooth. When they were asked why only one was able to do or perform the requirement, most answered, the qu most answered they had conflict with schedule and they're still looking for a patient and they are busy and there's lack of time. So under the product, <coughs> the respondents generally agreed that they have met the needs from the oral surgery program because they, they gained, according to them, they gained confidence, knowledge, and skills and they use it in their practice. And the students are very satisfied with the course. In the satisfaction rating, 60% said yes. And when they were asked if they use the training in the practice, so um, there's no data. <laughs> um, they, you always use it in their practice. However, in the self-assessment of skill competency after they take the program, it shows that the weighted mean results shows that after the training, students have average competency, meaning just competent to some extent in areas of complicated tooth extraction, lower and upper third molar odontectomy, which are the most important areas when you're doing um, oral surgery course. So they're just um, above competent when, in terms of suturing and anesthetic technique. So for discussion and conclusion, so the aim of the study is to evaluate and redesign the post-oral surgery course. So this table summarizes my conclusion. So for the context, the general dentists primarily want to gain confidence in doing complicated extractions, minor oral surgery, improve their skills, and gain more surgery patients. Um, they strongly believe the need for a post-grad oral surgery program and they, they prefer a short, concise course rather than a full-time or master's degree. 
they have generally less competent skills on all aspects of oral surgery, which should be improved. Now, in the input, based on the results, respondents general, generally believe that the course content and objectives are relevant, relevant and compatible to their needs in the program. So, in the process, um, do I still have time, huh? <laughs> Should I continue? In the process, so the following are the areas which need improvement. The meeting room and facilities, methods of instruction, student evaluation and feedback, and the length of training. So the implementation of actual case re requirement must be revisited so that dentists will be motivated to do the requirement for completion. And for the product, generally speaking, the students think they are able to meet their needs and expectations. However, the result of their self-assessed competency proves they still lack the skills in majority of the oral surgery fields even after taking the course. So the recommendation is that the client use the results of the needs assessment as a guide when they redesign the program and to improve the program in the following areas and to implement a better design and motivation for students to perform actual case requirement and to include more activities, workshops, and hands-on exercises in the program which will improve their skills in the important areas of basic oral surgery. Um, thank you very much, Vanessa. Um, do you have any questions from our panel or from the audience? Thank you for your presentation, and uh, I can't believe you did that in one cent. <laughs> a lot. Um, I w may I just ask, why did you choose the CITP model to to use as uh, for this project? So among other models. Among other models. So based on the CITP model, is a decision oriented or management oriented um, approach and we wanted to redesign or improve the program and I think it's best it's the best approach that we can use uh, granting that we want to um, evaluate the entire program from its content up to the assessment and I know I you gave a brief background on what the program was about but I was interested how long has the program been running and how many have actually enrolled in the program um, the program has been running for uh, for three years now, uh, in between three to four years, and um, total number of enrollees is uh, is around more than a hundred. I chose the last three batches because in the last three batches we implemented the model surgery workshop, so the evaluation will be different from the the older group from the um, earlier groups. So how many times do you run it in a year? Uh, uh, probably two or three times a year, depending on the number of uh, enrollees. So if we still have lack of students, if uh, we don't uh, pursue with the, with the course, we wait until we're able to reach the quota. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, some just basic. Uh, so I think uh, in terms of, uh, okay, so I think when you do the CIPP and you're doing another model related to it, that one model probably would be the, you need, because you, in any evaluation, you need to compare from what is exp what was intended and what has been observed. So it's actually intended versus observed. So you talk about, for example, CIPP, your intent in context, your intent in input, your intent in process, your intent in product. So like your product will be, uh, the intent will be an improvement from, for example, a competency that you identified in your needs analysis, which are low, right? And uh, product, so uh, after, the, after the program, so the best way actually during about to present is to 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 s present side by side intent versus observe 
kasulad ng intent mo, sabi mo within the context of, for example, uh, content. Your content, uh, but some of the content that you discussed actually were supposed to be a process issue like how to teach teaching learning strategies. But you talk about, for example, data on uh, what you call it, the yung low data mo sa mean competency, mean self-assessment, right? In the area of self yung sa last na self-assessment dito ng mga ilang competencies. Low, right? Yes, low. So kung yun ang iyong context analysis, the design should have been, uh, the course should have addressed those, right? Kasi yun ang mababa eh. Ngayon, did the course really address that? Yun ang ina natin. So, ibig sabihin, uh, based on the initial context analysis, that the the the, student, the the target target participants are actually assess themselves as low in this particular area. So therefore, your course, the, the course that you're offering, should address this area where they are low, right? And did that happen in the course? You know, sinasabi mo pag sinabi mo context analysis, was the intended context, which is the addressing this competency develop uh, uh, competency uh, uh, low competency areas. Was it the coverage of the actual training, di ba? Then you go into the input, uh, yung content area kasi mo, uh, yung input natin dito ay hindi lang content, ano? Yung input natin ay, naalala mo, nagsabi ka na isa lang nakagawa ng Record. scenario. Record. Ng required scenario. Actually, input yun because you need, you need actual patience as requirement for, as input for the successful implementation of the course. So it would have been a target one is to one. Right? Bawat isa ba? Isa ba yun ang kailangan mo? Yes. Uh, At least one? Two, two requirements per student. Two requirements. Pero mm -hmm. nakita natin, isa lang ano? Sa isa ibig lang sabihin, gumawa. Uh, so may input. Is that supposed to be provided by the trainee? Or is that supposed to be provided by the trainee himself? They, they should provide their own patient. Ah, so yung ganong context. So, uh, okay, tapos dito sa self-satisfaction, I think it would be very difficult to look at self-assessment as a major product. Especially kung workshop mo ay may skill side. Kailangan mo either kung gumamit ka ng, gumamit ka ng results of... Actually, pwede ka nga hindi na nila mag-self-assessment eh. Pwede mong tingnan kung meron kayo sanang ginagamit na tools. Input din yun, ano? Yung sa assessment at process. May, may, meron ba kayong observation instruments or tools to look into their procedures? How they Parang perform? evaluation criteria lang. Apa, kaya lang, unfortunately, only one was able to Ah, kaya hindi. Perform. So you cannot actually, at this particular point, pwede mong sabihin hindi ka na mag-proceed sa product kasi wala ka naman data for product. Eh. Kasi isa lang yan eh. Di ba? So you can actually, by the way, with the CIPP, you don't need to complete the whole CIPP. Kung sa tingin mo, you're only after the process issue. Kasi the most of your recommendations are in, are in the process. Eh. Actually, wala kang product, product recommendation. Wala kang input recommendation. So kung isa yung i-reminder sa inyo na nag evaluate kung feeling nyo, wala naman kayong data dun sa dulo na yon product, huwag na nyo nang i-attempt kasi non-evaluable yung product because of the absence of documentation. Unless you can go back and observe them as they perform procedures. Ano lang yun, ha? input lang tayo, hindi doon sa ano mo, kasi hindi mo naman talaga magagawa yun eh. <laughs> because of that time, no? inaano ko lang na hindi mo talaga makukollecta yun. Uh, so, reminder sa inyo, kung mag evaluate ng program at may CIPP model, it will have to be designed from the very beginning before the program was designed. Para lahat na data na to, nakukollect during Kasi otherwise, kung tapos ka na mag-implement at hindi mo na-develop yung evaluation component, wala ka namang data ang mag magagamit at the end kasi they were never collected during training. Kaya nga it's important in any training design, you already include your evaluation plan, not just the assessment plan. Kasi meron tayo palaging assessment ng students, eh, but you need to include evaluation plan para uh, makolekta. Katulad yan, wala. No? They'll probably just say, we were not able to don't just include the product. You say this this is a CIPP model, but this mo this presentation will focus only on the four three elements of the CIPP, CIP. Uh, and not the product because wala tayong masyadong documentation on. Okay? But uh, congratulations. I think uh, sabi nga ni Mia, <laughs> short time. <laughs>
Can I just um, say some other things to improve the topic? First, you mentioned that uh, re uh, research question. So if you're doing an evaluation, shift it as evaluative questions or evaluation questions para in context yung mga questions mo. Um, and then what we didn't see is how the tools were validated. It was not reported how that was developed, how is that validated. So I think that's important to include in your report the process and how that was done. And then lastly, rethink the title. So the, the word evaluation came out twice in your title. So you may just want to move around the words to minimize it and then uh, catch the audience with what you're actually doing. Okay, that's just all. Remove altogether the, the evaluation in the title. So even in your objectives, uh, general objective, as you said, to be able to evaluate, you remove the eval, change it because you are, the whole process is evaluation. So look for a better descriptive or uh, outcome that you want to achieve. So probably you want to, at the end of this, partic this particular procedure is basically to, not to say evaluate, but probably to uh, look for something different. Because uh, remember, our central question for evaluation is always, is it worth it? Is it worth attending your course? So uh, uh, make sure that after you finish your presentation, you will have answer to, my, to the respondents or to the future market, market ano mo, na, is it worth marketing this particular? And did all your data, or were you able to, to answer that using available data that you presented? Now, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Merong ground. Siyempre, ayaw nyo na rin magtanong. Okay, so we move on to uh, our next presenter. Our next presenter will be uh, discussing with us um, her, her evaluation project entitled um, Formative Evaluation of the Health Leadership and Management Program, or HLMP as a coaching and training development approach for Zwilling Family Foundation staff. Uh, let's all welcome Dr. Ellen Medina. Thank you, Mbetra. Good morning, everybody. So I'm using the same evaluation model, so well noted on the comments from the panel. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is a formative evaluation of the health leadership <coughs> excuse me, and management program as a coaching and training development approach for Zwilling Family Foundation staff. So since this is very much organizational, I'll give you a quick background on ZFF as an organization so you'll also know the context of this evaluation study. So the Zwilig Family Foundation is a non-government organization that aims to work as a catalyst for the achievement of better health outcomes for the poor. Uh, to make it more clear, the ZFF vision is to, be, uh, to achieve better health outcomes for the poor by strengthening leadership and governance with a primary focus on rural communities in the Philippines. So this is the work of ZFF. Our mission is to enhance the quality of life of Filipinos by focusing on the achievement of the country's sustainable development goals for health in partnership with government and other stakeholders. So uh, that's just a quick background. What we do as an approach is we really focus on leadership. We have what we call the health change model. And this health change model stipulates that for us to be able to achieve uh, good health outcomes at the local level, it needs to be sustained by an effective and working local health system. And for that local health system to happen, for that local health system to be functional, it needs good leadership. And that is what we focus on. We focus on strengthening and creating responsive leadership and governance structures within the local health units. So that's the essence of the health change model. Uh, to discuss this, we introduced the concept of the bridging leadership framework to our local leaders. Mainly, these are, just to cite examples, these are mayors, municipal health officers, governors, provincial health officers, and the like. So the work of ZFF, since it's centered on partnering with health leaders across all levels, so we partner with national regional, provincial, and municipal levels on improving health systems using the bridging leadership approach. What we need, therefore, are good trainers and coaches. Our staff 
need to be able to develop that kind of leadership in our partners. So ZFF staff must be good trainers, must be good coaches to be able to help the health leaders achieve their goals. And that is what the health leadership and management program is all about. So it's designed to equip leaders with the necessary knowledge, skills, and attitudes to facilitate transition from old arrangements, both at the level of the personal and the community, in relation to one's involvement in the health sector as a leader. The HLMP, specifically for our staff, is geared towards developing them as coaches and trainers of LGU leaders in bridging leadership. So for this evaluation, I decided to use the CIP CIPP model primarily because I'm doing this study to get recommendations on how we can further improve the program. Uh, the eva this evaluation model by Stoffel Beam is seen to be a comprehensive framework for conducting formative and summative evaluations of projects, personnel, products, organizations, and evaluation systems. And it can help us identify the learning needs, the community's needs, and how we can improve the processes so that ultimately we get the product that we want. So that is why I decided to do the CIPP model. This particular version of the HLMP is, is a pilot run. This is the first time that we dedicated an HLMP specifically for our staff. What we used to do was we would just send them to the trainings that we do for the mayors, the MHO, so that they get exposed, they learn the ropes, and then we expect them to be able to do their work already after that. So this time we decided we'll form this training program specifically for us. So only ZFF staff were participants of this training. So this is a pilot run, and we're, we're currently at the point of deciding how we will continue this program. So my, my objectives for this particular study is to determine the appropriateness and relevance of the HLMP for ZFF staff development, to assess the completeness of module one content and learning methods in providing baseline knowledge to ZFF staff, and to assess the confidence of ZFF staff in serving as coach and trainers for LGU le leaders in relation to the early training that they received. So for that, I have the following questions. I limited it to at least just one question for each uh, part of the, mod of the model. So for context, I want to see if the program is designed to address the need for staff development, especially for this kind of work. Uh, for input, did the model module content provide sufficient baseline knowledge for performance of ZFF staff assignment? For the process, were the methods used effective to enhance the learning of the participants? And for the product, does early training in BL improve the confidence of the staff in serving as coach and trainers for LGU leaders? Because for this particular study, I viewed the product as the ZFF staff who is already ready to do his or her work. So, uh, and I'll discuss that further. So my scope for this evaluation is uh, training module one because what we see is that the HLMP module would have two modules. Uh, so I only focused on the first one, which was conducted in August 2017, and then the first three months of practicum period that followed the training. So uh, my limitations, given the time constraints for the study, my, the data I gathered may still be incomplete, and it's still for assessment if there's really statistical significance with the data that I have. But to give you an idea, the tools that I used included one, uh, because some of the materials were already done and uh, gathered during the training itself, and some I just followed up after the training. And the results from all of these tools are mixed and used together to be able to answer the different questions for the evaluation. So one tool was to gather the knowledge of the staff. So it's a 20 item pre-test and post-test covering the major concepts introduced during the training. Another tool uh, was a daily evaluation form that we use. This is something that we use regularly for our training activities. And it's, it uses a Likert scale to uh, gather participant feedback regarding the accomplishment of training objectives, relevance of the topics, methodologies used, the presentations and visual aids, time allotment, and then we have open-ended questions that would answer the questions on their most and least liked sessions as well as their evaluations of the resource persons. This, the results were consolidated per day using mode. Uh, I'll show you some results later, which will show why I am still questioning the statistical significance of the results. 
In addition to this, I also gave a post-training reflection form to the participants to gather their uh, responses regarding the application of their learnings after the training uh, and the usefulness of the inputs in their work. So it's, uh, it's a set of open-ended questions that they responded to. In addition to this, to complete the evaluation, I did a review of existing materials already since this training has already been done. So we have an HLMP concept note, the minutes of the daily lessons learned session we have after each training day, uh, the module one training report, and other HR materials on staff competency requirements. So I had 12 participants during the training and all of them responded to the daily evaluation forms. but only six out of the 12 responded to the post-training reflection form. So eight of them were uh, female and four were male. Most of them were in the age range of 25 to 40. Uh, most of the staff of ZFF are relatively young. And for this particular group, since we're trying it out with new staff, majority of them have been with ZFF for only zero to six months. So for the context, this is the whole program. Uh, what we want is, for staff to be developed, not just through one training module, but through two training modules and a coaching and practicum that would last for at least three months. So they would complete the six month probationary period with already uh, having received all of this training and coaching support. So when asked on the relevance of HLMP to their work assignments, this uh, relatively new staff uh, included uh, responded in this way. So they were able to understand their purpose, they were able to understand their personal strength, and they helped them get a background and grounding on leadership. In the daily evaluation form, usually the results, I, I'm not sure if this is a factor of the forms being given at the end of the training day. So everyone starts, just, they were all just checking, but relatively uh, the responses were positive. So we, we took the mode for all the responders per day and then the mode of the four days. And relatively, everyone strongly agreed with the indicators that we mentioned. So uh, since they are expected to function as trainers and coaches, uh, the train having met the training objectives, it can be assumed that uh, we the, the, the training is sufficient to achieve its context. For the input, uh, the training content contains both technical and leadership content with topics as mentioned below. And their post-test results that five of the only five of the 12 got higher scores in the post-test, although two of them who were not able to take the pre-test still got scores of 19 and 18 over 20. So relatively, there's an increase in the baseline knowledge of staff when it comes to the feedback. They also provided feedback on coaching as an input that helped them to set directions and improve quality of their outputs and their work deliverables. So uh, generally, I'll just summarize it. Generally, the participants uh, thought that the inputs provided through training and coaching were able to help them, although there appears to be a need based on some feedback that we need to be able to contextualize the input, the content of the training more on first staff rather than in the LGU context because usually we use cases that would give LGU cases as examples. And coaching is done, but the coaching needs to be more purposive in terms of leadership development. So the process, it's a training and coaching program with 3.5 days of training and one-on-one -on -one time with immediate supervisors during the practicum period. For this case, it was a three-month period. Again, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm still questioning the results of the daily evaluation because it's generally perfect. So, <laughs> so the process is ZFF deploys adult learning techniques and art of hosting, which would provide a variety of methodologies in our training. And our brand of coaching is non-prescriptive using questions to guide the participants. Uh, in terms of product, what we hope is that the participants are able to manifest bri both bridging leadership competencies and management and technical co competencies. We have a set of competencies defined for BL and for the management and technical competencies with the level of competencies very well defined according to position. And while the training and coaching were able to provide grounding on this work, 
the participants still felt like they need more work exposure to be able to fully say that they were ready to do their work. So while it helped provide and helped to anticipate what will happen, the real test will happen when they're on the ground. So only s at this point, only self-perception of the participants can be established because they have yet to be objectively assessed in terms of their leadership and technical competencies. Uh, I have just a few more recommendations. I have recommendations on the overall program based on the findings, but uh, generally what it says is that we need to be able to customize our program specifically for staff and not just to adapt what was in the from the LGU and then transform it for staff because the staff have different competency expectations and different needs. So we need to be able to develop them as trainers and coaches right from the start. And the training design and the coaching design will have to follow that. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ellen. Um, any questions from the panel? Thank you and congratulations. And thank you for the information you gave us about the Suwilig Family Foundation. That, that seems like very interesting and um, promising work. Um, I think you did the, what, what I liked about your presentation is that it was very well defined. Your questions were limited to one, but clearly defined and you answered all your um, evaluation questions, I believe, very well. Um, you kept on mentioning um, that you weren't confident about the daily evaluations. So my question is, how do you think, uh, how do you, how will you increase your confidence in that? Or how will you, um, I guess, modify it so that you can have, you can be better confident with the results of that? Uh, with the, the form itself, well, I think we can further improve how the indicators are stated to make them more specific. But I think what I'm looking for is further validation through, I was hoping to correlate their answers in the post-training reflection form uh, to the findings from the training because I was hoping that they would give more lengthy and substantive answers that would show that they are they were really they really found the training input and training contents helpful so maybe uh well one is maybe we can improve the form further but another is we could probably validate it further with uh a one uh probably a group or whatever conversation with the participants after the training so that we can really get their honest answers. Because as I said, the way it was administered may have also contributed to how they responded. Siguro also, you can defer it to the next day. Like, while they're waiting in the morning, evaluate the day before, para they had time to digest, or makapagsulat sila ng may more time. Yeah, that's another easy way to do it also. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, the program you did mention is basically pretty recent, right? Uh, you say it's been ongoing actually, uh, just a few months, the last yes, few months. Yes. So do you think uh, CIPP should be the most appropriate design, given uh, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, CIPP is very ex intensive? Uh, uh, would you, if you given another chance, do you, would you consider another design or approach? Uh, sir, I was, I was actually thinking of uh, another design, which one is would be Kirkpatrick, since we're focusing on training, and okay. another is if the objectives-oriented uh, models. But I, uh, well, I dis I didn't use them because one, I didn't think that at this point we would already have achieved all the objectives that we wanted for the program, since it was just the first module and then the first three months. And then the, for the Kirkpatrick, again, also, I'm not sure if I could already attain an evaluation until level four, because I think it, that would need more time and also more work experiences for the participants for us to be able to say that they were really able to apply their learning. So I chose CIP, CIPP on the basis that I looked at it as a formative evaluation so that the inputs I get from that would contribute to further improving it. Mm. Sorry. So, yeah. Uh, I'm asking that because the, the very nature of your uh, evaluation, this is formative. So CIPP may be 
uh, overdoing the evaluation at this particular point since maybe subjective oriented would be okay. Uh, remind ko kayo kanina na when you say a model, you don't say you complete the model. Let's say, for example, if you're using Kirkpatrick's, and most of the data actually that you have are very appropriate for a Kirkpatrick data, uh, hindi naman talaga kailang, and it's formative, so you actually that would mean you only go up to the level of probably uh, most of the data that you do, that you presented will be level one and two, right? Because that would, will be um, reaction and learning. Uh, kasi kahit gamitin mo yung CIPP mo, hindi mo pa rin maabot yung product. Kasi your product would still be at the level of uh, post-term, post uh, program, post program outcomes. Katulad ng, were they able to, for example, actually perform coaching? Were the coaching actually, actually able to result to more benefits to mayors? And mga ganong, hindi mo rin uh, maaabot yun eh. So, uh, so, just to be ano na, na ano lang nasa evolve. While you have models, you don't need to complete models. Kung sa talagang doon ka lang, doon ka lang abot. So kung pinili mo, for example, si Kirkpatrick, uh, aabot ka lang doon sa dalawa. Hindi ka aabot sa, resu sa results. A, a behavior. Kasi yung behavior mo will be, are they practicing it? Will they, they have the opportunity to already coach? Yes, sir. But within the next few months. Oh, so, ibig sabihin, wala pa tayo doon sa level ng behavior. So that would mean we will never be able to go to 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 results. Kasi logic model yan eh. Ang ganyan hindi mo karating yung learning mo at hindi ka na ano doon, hindi ka makakamove to the next evaluation level. Kasi wala namang use na i-evaluate mo yung output, yung results, kung hindi mo na evaluate yung behavior. Because results will only happen if the behavior was, per, was practiced. So yun yung tatanda niya. Tapos yung isang issue doon sa issue ng tools mo, uh, kaya medyo gano'n na nakukuha natin results. I think you need to re-examine the tools because the tools will actually will give you that kind of results. You need to be more careful with using this kind of... Nirinimand uh, tayo, for example, the current patterns of doing those kind of... using those kind of instruments because the instruments uh, will not provide you with more... with, with very useful information relevant uh, in relation to the training. But, um, so, gano'n na siguro. Uh, alam kong kayo uh, excited to comment ng models. Uh, pero hindi yung kailang, hindi nyo kailangang kompletohin yung model kung sa tingin nyo yung inyong training program o yung program nyo ay hindi pa right for that. Kasi talaga namang formative ka pa lang sa so meaning you're trying just to improve the next training. Uh, so, kung gano'n, wag mo lang i-attempt. Sabihin mo na palagi na I will use this model but the inco will not complete the whole model. Only focus on that particular model. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and then, um, uh, we move on to our next presenter. Our next presenter will be um, discussing with us her evaluation project entitled Significance of Work Immersion Program to Senior High School Students. Um, career planning and decision making of International Christian School for school year um, 2017 to 2018. So let's all welcome Ms. Zainabeth Conde. Thank you. Um, good morning once again. So I'm Zai Konde. Um, far different from them, they're actually uh, um, connected to institutions. So I am not include. I am not actually connected to any institution uh, currently. But I have my own uh, consultancy office. That's why I had this opportunity to actually have this project with a private school in Quezon City. So this. Uh, evaluation came from that idea. So the title of my evaluation is Significant Influence of Work Immersion Program to Senior High School Students Career Planning and Decision Making of International Christian School. So just to give a brief, brief, a brief background of my, our consultancy services, so we give um, training and mentoring to 
and tutorial to self-directed clients privately and uh, publicly. So I am an affiliate of an NGO to provide uh, livelihood training, particularly in business setup and business-related knowledge. So in this case, I would like to give you the background of my study in which this came from the guidelines of DepEd, uh, which is being highlighted. Uh, they have two general guidelines actually, specifically for the objective. Number one is to help uh, develop among the learners the life and career skills. And number two is to make decisions on post-secondary education or employment. So I have chosen the, the latter part, which is the to make decision on post-secondary education or employment, in particular to the work immersion. Because uh, in conversion, to convert the work immersion per se is the on-the-job training skills that a college student should be acquiring prior to graduation. So in this case, since uh, the, the K-12 has been introduced to the Philippines, uh, recently, so the work immersion also, uh, th that the DepEd also included the work immersion program to senior high school. So just imagine these students are actually age 15, 16, uh, as compared to college students. So the risk and uh, the money and everything that the parent would uh, give to the students while doing this work immersion is really high. So in this case, this particular evaluation will merely focus on, on the decision making of the student, college uh, or the senior high school student. If work immersion really helps them decide on what course they, they should be taking into college or they should uh, proceed work or employment. So aside from that, Here in the Philippines, actually, we have uh, several advocacy groups already who's helping the career path planning of the college students or senior high school students. They started um, leading the students through Education PH. This is one of the, the group that I have talked uh, last, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was October just recently. They had this um, education fair in uh, Robinson, so talking about career path for the senior high school. Although the work immersion there has not been uh, uh, discussed, so this was all the job opportunities and everything. And also, the, the I have read one of the study of Dr. Nancy Pascual, uh, who also have a consultancy office that um, focusing on the results of the factors affecting the decision making of the senior or the students, particularly in the Rizal area. So laboratory science school in the Rizal uh, area. So these factors actually affecting the decision making of the students. In specific, the parents are included there. Okay. The the work, okay, et, uh, these are the factors. I, I consider the work I will get after finishing my degree in choosing a course. So that's uh, one highlighted uh, factor that Pascual actually uh, mentioned in her study. Number two is the availability of the job in the future affects the choice of the course of the senior high school. That's another one. And then the preferent course. Okay. And the last one is my friend's preference, of course, affects my decision in, in uh, choosing a course. So these factors greatly affect the student on how they will decide what course they should be taking in college. So therefore, the purpose of my evaluation is to determine whether the work immersion as, guide, uh, as given guidelines by the DepEd really helps the senior high school student to decide in their future career, as well as to determine if the work immersion can be a factor 
in the career planning. And as a review of related studies, na rate, uh, as given before, so it, these are the factors, the parents, the school and environment, the friends, the future career, and exposure to technical knowledge. So it wasn't uh, mentioned there the, the site of, or, or, of the, or, or the site of the learning or, uh, the, or the OJT or the work immersion. Okay. Given the fact that o OJT has been, uh, college student has been doing OJT for before prior, prior to um, graduation. All right, the object of my evaluation is the International Christian School, as mentioned before, uh, which have 59 senior school students who will be um, doing the work immersion the second SEM, but we do not have yet the data of what particular institution they'll be, they will be joining. So the project is actually ongoing. Um, the, the school is a private school, which is a member of uh, Association of Private School and Administrator in Quezon City. And it is located in uh, Novaliches. So the tracks that uh, these students belong are STEM, HAMS, and the GAS. Okay. So the stakeholders actually are the DepEd, hopefully, and the school in particular. So medyo it actually a um, big uh, 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 evaluation project, but I'm focusing to only one muna for this particular subject. Okay, the objective of the evaluation is really to assess whether the work immersion will help senior high school students to make decisions on post-secondary education or employment. So this is the only focus. Okay, and number two is to determine the outcome of the work immersion program to senior high school to develop a tool that will help them to self-assess their career path. Okay, and the scope, okay, the project timeline is three months since I am a private consultant, so I, I'm not really sure if I can really um, sustain the budget, but this is self-initiated budget uh, and the, the, the location of the studies in Quezon City. And then the beneficiaries definitely will be the senior high school students and the parents as well. So uh, I forgot to mention that there's a gap there's a portion in the guidelines also uh, mentioning there that the parents or there's a particular payment for the work immersion to the partner partnering institution. So this thing is actually talking about uh, um, money in terms of for the allowance of the students and for the students. And you know, the risks that the students will be uh, taking while doing the immersion. And then the evaluation question is work immersion has significant influence to decision making of senior high school students to, to continue post secondary education or employment. So very specific to decision making. The approach will be Kirkpatrick <coughs> level one and two. Okay, so this is just to determine the effectiveness of the training through the study of the reaction and learning map. So, Fern Patrick has four levels of training um, of evaluation. So I've been focusing on two of the two levels, the reaction and the learning. So from the reaction, and what would help the students may think that they should continue college or they work after college, after this. Okay, so the methodology and the design, this is a descriptive study using a five-point Likert scale from positive to negative scale, strongly agree to, strongly disagree. The category will be work environment, work type, performance of the students, performance of the partner institution, and then another tool will be interview. So using, uh, to, to analyze the data, I'll be using the EPIVO for uh, and uh, for the qualitative and quantitative for Istana. So, 
For the recommendation, this is actually for the consideration of what immersion program if we can consider an additional factor to include, uh, if this can be considered as additional factor to the Lipat, to the senior high, and then probable additional input to the focus of the general objective of that end, and possibly view an enhancement of partnership competency requirement for children need in decision making of high school. So, this is the sample question reviews, uh, interview reviews that we will be running. And these are my references. Yeah, so my time is up already. <laughs> Thank you for listening. So I'm now ready for your questions and reactions. Hi, say, you call yourself something else. Zai, Zai, Zai. Yeah. Hi, Zai. Okay, so just is this just a proposal? Am I? Is it? Um, actually, it's the, the the ongoing study already. Pero this is the outline of our uh, revalidation proposal to the school who asked for our help. Oh. Okay, so I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> All throughout, I was waiting for There's what's going to happen. Okay, so iba yung, iba, I, I, I look at it differently. Anyway, so I guess my my main question is, is the work immersion, uh, immersion required by the DepEd for all schools? Yeah. Okay, All if you're offering a senior high school, then you must have a work immersion program. That's what Deb Eddy is saying. Yes. Okay. If you're in the K to 12. Or OJT. Or yes. OJT. It's like an OJT. And then how do the students choose? Is it do the schools deploy the students or do they have a choice? Well, the problem actually arise from that one. The the company at uh, uh, the school approached me to look for the companies for their school for the partnership. So that's why the, the school is actually looking for the partner institution for the work immersion. It's not the company. It's not like the OJP that if you want to go there then just give the letter. It's not like that. So this thing is with the Roma and then there's a corresponding amount coming from the Moet of that Ed. So there's a budget for that, particular budget for that, to do the work in motion for the students. Uh, yet it only covers 80 hours of their work, uh, of their uh, hours this uh, no, this sem. So thinking of 80 hours and then the competency from the even with the deficits. So that's why I focus to only one uh, objective which is the decision making, it really helps the, the senior high school choose what career they would like to get in college or they would work instead after the senior high school. I think it's hard to comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, mom. Because this is a depth at thing, so... No, 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 not because it's a depth. I mean, to comment on the report because I don't know uh, if I'm gonna comment on the process that you want to anyway, but for me, the, the way I understand it, dame question mo maganda yung tanong kasi nakatulong ba naman talaga yan sa so actually isa lang yung pra, isa lang yung titingnan mo in the end, eh, di ba? Kung pagdating nila sa college, uh, ano na lang nangyari sa kanila, ano pag graduation na in March? So sa June, the June. nasaan na ito mga graduate na to? Tapos imamatch mo lang siya dun sa work immersion. Exactly. If they, they help the work, the work immersion person help them to decide what course they have reach. So para sa akin, you know, take it home. Pwede mo. Pwede mo. Pwede mo. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, my question is very basic actually. Uh, is this evaluation or is this educational evaluation or is this educational research? Evaluation, sir. Because if you look at it, you're looking at two variables. Yeah. And the variable will be immersion and the choice. So it's basically independent versus independent variable. Uh, you're testing the relationship between two 
the, the two variables. So, um, I will personally, I will not look at it as an educational value. Okay. I will look at it as an educational research. Uh, looking at your presentations, uh, uh, it's basically like, pag ang para kaya yung mga uh, questions na lumalabas, for example, ay lumabalas in the context of uh, will will your what what is there will there be will the inter will the OJT or the immersion program have influence on the choice, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that's basically a question. So kung ganon, it's not it's not uh, an an uh, 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 in a narrow line of between educational evaluation and educational research. So I I would personally I don't know uh, I'm a professor uh, but personally I would look at it as an educational research. That's why next time I'll be enrolling to research. <laughs> so more than an educational evaluation, I honestly know. As yung the whole process that you even if you look at Kurt, because the um, Unless, of course, you're really looking into the process of immer the immersion itself. Yeah. Going it improve that w without the issue of this without the issue of decision making. Just the halimbawa kung nag kung nag the immersion for the pro the immersion as a program and if the program resulted to outcomes mm -hmm. and the outcomes is not the option the outcome is not the choice of of track in the future college, but the outcome is they learn something from the immersion. Kasi ang pinag-uusapan natin ay did the educational intervention kasi yun ha, did the educational intervention which is the immersion resulted to 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 the development of the competency expected of the tradition. Because the decision you will have to do next is do we send students again there? Magkaibang decision na na. The other decision is, do, we, do I send students again to the particular company? Ini-evaluate mo ngayon yung immersion with that company. Pero ang pinag-usapan natin dito ay iba, irrespective of what company, ang pinag-usapan natin ay, did the immersion influence the choice of future career? Di ba? So, so sa tanong yun, so pag nagpawin yung dalawang tanong mo, magpapagong ngayon yung design mo. Kaya yung sa mga tanong mo, to me, would be an educational evaluation. Ah, educational research issue, not educational value. Because you focus on the effect of relationship between immersion and choice. In the young, uh, if impact or result of immersion to development of competency as an internet, as an, don't say isa, I will, will look at immersion as a teaching learning strategy. Right? The strategy resulting to kaya nga sabi mo ito ba yung pinakamaganda para ma-achieve yung outcome? Kasi ito rin ito ay immersion pa pinakamaganda to make their choice. Or will there be other influencer of the choice? Kasi baka immersion actually pag na my, my, one, my daughter now is into the OJT you know? so, nasa K-12 sa so, UPIS so yung kasi siya ang pinili niya ay so, ang mga rotation niya sa UP Diliman ay yung arts, radio, you know, theater, museum, curates, curates and museum. Yan yun yung perspective niya. Oh, pero from the very beginning, yun na kasi yung option na gusto niya. Kaya niya pinili yun sa... So, ayun mo, pag pinili mo na yung kasi sa, sa track mo, hindi yun ang influence ng track na mag-change sa'yo. But from the very beginning, yun na yung gusto mo eh. It was already track that was selected. So, yun ang comment ko doon na. Okay, sir. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I even um that can you hindi ko actually din sa report mo what is for immersion, what are the processes involved in it? Kasi yun yung hinahanap ko na evaluate. Okay, so you this is Judy Malcolm. Thank you. Hi, guys. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there was one slide na you showed that your evaluation evaluate our students. Yeah. Tama. Parang, uh, yung inconsistency lang ng ano ko talaga yung evaluate mo? Yung program, yung students, yung, di ba? If you're ah. So, parang, yun siguro yung dun na conflicting, that's one. Kaya parang, research, mas more on research yung dating niya kaysa dun sa 
evaluation. Okay, Anna. Thank you. Kasi ano na naman eh, kasi sabi ko, based na naman ang question mo sa ibalo. Kasi nga, tanong mo, is it worth it? So yung tanong mo yun, di ba, hindi naman ang tanong ng is it worth it? Ang tinatanong lang yun ay, will it, will, will it influence a choice? Kasi ako, well, kung it's worth it, you have selected several companies, it's worth it bringing back the, bringing the future students to the same company or to the same other job opportunities or learning opportunities. Yun ang kini-question natin pag iba, di ba? Uh, para mas ma... You know. Thank you. Thank you.
critical care, knowledge that we feel that are uh, essential regardless of whatever specialty they, they, they pursue in the future. Currently, this is running on its second year, so the, the first batch are currently interns or senior interns. The purpose of the evaluation is to determine whether the clinical clerks are satisfied with the quality of, of their ex educational experience in anesthesia. So the main goal was to increase the anesthetic trainees in um, anesthesia uh, through exp to exposure of the clinical clerks in a, in a quality educational experience. So. This, the purpose is to determine whether they are satisfied with the current um, educational experience and to determine whether the rotation will be a, a good avenue to, to recruit potential uh, anesthesia trainings and eventually to enhance the program. The scope of the evaluation the stakeholders would be clinical clerks and hopefully they will recruit their airway skills and critical care skills. The Department of Anesthesia this will enable us to have more exposure uh, to the rest of the medical medical uh, people, um, and hopefully this will translate to an increase in anesthesia trainings in the future. And for the College of Medicine to have a well-rounded um, medical students, the scope of evaluation is actually one year, but. For the purpose of this evaluation, I managed to start with um, August only. Um, I'm part of the anesthetic department, so I'm the internal evaluator. Possible biases would be um, because I'm part of it, but I'm not in charge of the clinical clerks, although I am partly involved in the actual teaching of the clinical clerks. Resources <coughs> survey will be given or were given to the clinic first after the seven day rotation. Um, Dropbox for the survey forms will be reviewed at the end of the school year. Um, so the limitation, obviously, school year is not finished yet, so the, the number of subjects is not complete. Evaluation objectives, to determine whether the expectations of the clinical clerks with regards to their anesthesia rotation are being met and to determine whether the anesthesia rotation is a good enough exposure to make the clinical clerks interested in pursuing anesthesia, most specifically in the Dallas Health System. Evaluation questions include uh, where the anesthesia clerks expectations for the rotation met or exceeded. Did the rotation in anesthesia increase the, increase the clinical clerk's desire to pursue anesthesiology as a career, and whether their anesthesia rotation increased their desire to pursue, pursue anesthesia training at the DLS University. Because this is a training uh, program, I chose Kirkpatrick Level 1. Uh, we don't have any uh, exams for them to uh, evaluate the learning afterwards. So, I'm stuck with the book, and it, it's a descriptive type. So data collection and then the procedure would be survey and interview. Instrument to be used, uh, questionnaire consisting of closed-ended questions and open-ended questions, using the Likert scale for the open-ended, uh, closed-ended questions. This is the actual uh, survey form that um, is not being So strongly agree, agree, undecided, so I, I uh, place the number there. Strongly agree is five, four, three, one. My expectations for the rotation were met. Second, were, were exceeded. The rotation helped me improve my skills that relate to all areas of medicine, including airway skills, intravenous line placement, lower time. This rotation has improved my knowledge of anesthesia and this rotation has helped improve my knowledge of general medicine. This rotation has increased my desire to pursue a career in anesthesiology, and I would like to pursue anesthesia residency training at the Southern University Medical Center. 
data analysis would be mixed quantitative and qualitative analysis. Some results. The survey started August 2017, and a total of 38 clinic clerks responded out of approximately 60. Uh, most of them are outside rotations. I couldn't think of survey forms. And I will be, I use the Microsoft Excel for uh, data analysis. Interpretation, so I, I assigned a number, 4.5 to 5 would be extremely satisfied. The respondents strongly agree with the statements um, that with the cost expectations, improving skills, improving knowledge, um, uh, and training in uh, anesthesiology at the DLS UMC. 3.5 to 4.5 would be very satisfied, it means they agree. 2.5, 3.5, they're undecided. Uh, 1.5, 2.5 is they disagree and strongly disagree for 1 to 1.5. The results <clears throat> for question number one, expectations were met mostly. It's very satisfying. Um, second, were exceeded, very satisfied as well. And uh, third would be, Help improve my skills and relate to all areas of medicine, airway, IV placement, very satisfied as well. The rotation improved my knowledge of anesthesia, so they were extremely satisfied with this one. So most of them don't have an idea of anesthesia, they, they only know that we put patients uh, here, they're very happy um, as the surgery for suggests. They also extremely satisfied with uh, Improving their knowledge in general medicine, uh, and actually they, they want to pursue anesthesia at the Dallas University Medical Center. The open-ended questions and interview part, uh, the the, the open-ended questions of the of the survey form includes this one. Majority, uh, the first question is, what did you enjoy the most during your anesthesia rotation? Most of them want to do more skills. They they, they want the skills. They like the skills the airway, the intubation, and mass ventilation. Uh, the next would be learnings and observing. Observing the different uh, anesthesia and surgical procedures that, that happens, and working with the residents and consultants. Um, one, one, one student uh, remarked that they like the free food uh, that we give. So, anyway. Um, Benign duty compared to the others, and um, application of anesthesia lectures in the clinical settings. The second question is, what areas do you think needs improvement? Um, it's either they put none, or they, they, they left it blank, or one actually said it's already good as it is, so majority thought that way. Uh, and the next one is the opportunity to do more skills. Again, they, they like doing more skills. Um, and Surprisingly, they, they want longer than seven days. Um, <clears throat> simulation to engage students, and they want more teaching. These charging patients from uh, patients from the post anesthesia care unit. Delegation of tasks between the junior interns and the senior senior interns. Third question is uh, other comments and suggestion. Again, majority left them blank or they put none. Again, they want longer rotation. So I might suggest this to the College of Medicine. Um, and more skills, more formal lectures, and they think that it's a fun and high yield um, rotation. Um, and they want uh, like a debriefing after a surgical procedure, like what, what tools or what techniques and aesthetic techniques that we use. For the interview, I only managed to interview three out of uh, 38. Uh, the, the initial expectations uh, I asked were basically pharmacology. They want they wanted to learn pharmacology specifically for for anesthesia, and they all they, they all were met um, and skills, spinal and intubation. Um, any problems encountered during the rotation? None. And again, longer rotation is always. So the conclusion, based on the sample size, very sample, small sample size, 
The fourth year medical students are returning in person at the Dallas Stock University Health Science Institute. We're generally very satisfied with their forced anesthesia per patient with a mean of 4.28, standard deviation of 0.86. They were generally happy with the airway skills that they learned and experienced and would love to have a longer um, anesthesia rotation. The recommendation is, again, to complete the whole um, school year to have uh, more subjects and possibly recommend lengthening the anesthesia rotation uh, and not being part of the elective but the big solo uh, rotation of one month. Improve the technical first anesthesia curriculum.
Kasi pwede tinatanong mo as if you're asking for a level of learning, yung isa naman kasi ay you think that it provided you with opportunity to learn. Malaki pa kaya ba yan, so yung so I think it's a good use of it's a it's a good use of that particular understanding of, of level one of our Patrick. Um, and I think it's just, this is appropriate for this particular uh, for this particular design. Uh, yun ang gagamitin. Talagang ganun muna siya. Uh, although tama, no, na sana makaabot tayo sa wag lang na... Uh, because even though we, you want them to really appreciate a distinction, hopefully you want to capture them. The bottom line pa rin is, did you learn anything from your rotation? So, kailangan umabot ka pa rin doon sa level 2 at least, no? We don't expect it to go into practicing level 3. Kasi kadalasan, medyo very technical kasi yung anesthesia skills, eh, no? Medyo, although in a life-threatening situation, there would be that kind of, uh, no, pero uh, I would agree on that na probably even at the level of, uh, anyway, kasama, actually kasama sa, can you just go back to your initial slide, just objectives mo? So, type two questions mo, ano? Are satisfied their quality of experience. Kasi ganun lang yung purpose, no? So basically, level nga lang ng reaction. But can you just go back to the objective, actual objective? The objective of the eval. Yan. Ah, uh, expectation. It's good enough exposure. Pero yun nga, I, I hope that anesthesia is not, kay, kayo na rin lang pala na naglalagay na exposure na ito, eh. Uh, baka maging conscious din ng anesthesia na this is not actually an exposure rotation. This is a competency development rotation din. Kaya, hindi ka nagpupunta sa anesthesia to rotate and say, maganda ba dito? Hindi. Meron din, ano natutunan mo pagkatapos? Kasi, kasi clerkship to eh, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, dapat bawat clerkship may intended outcomes. So, I think there, um, you, you consider also that level, no? Uh, although gusto mo yun lang, pero parang gusto rin natin malaman kung bukod sa task, satisfied ka, meron kang natutunan dito na not only at the level of self-appreciate, self-assessment, okay? Uh, the last comment that I have, so, remind ko lang sa atin, parang, baka, kaya, kaya pa lang na-remind ko niya, kasi baka, kayo mismo nag-treat, na exposure trip lang ito. <laughs> exposure trip, sir. Uh, uh, unfortunately, sir, like I mentioned a while ago, wala kasi yung uh, end rotation na assessment. Yun. Wala kami ganun ba yan. So, isip ko gawa ko, pero bias na ako siya. Hindi, <laughs> okay. It's evaluation. It will have to be biased. Uh, don't worry about bias in evaluation. The evaluation will always be biased. It's not the same as research. Educational research, you trust much as possible. You would like to control the bias. You, but in evaluation, there are all... Una, una, you don't want to generalize naman your results. Your results will only be in relation to your... Yung contact, yun lang naman sa loob na anesthesia yan eh. Hindi mo naman sasabihin yun din ang mangyayari sa anesthesia rotation ng UE, ng FEU. This is basically only for, for you. At inaano ko lang eh, baka kayo lang mismo maniwala na yung rotation na ito ay field trip. Parang immersion. But basically, your rotation is an educational event. Because it's a clinical exposure. And actually, there are clinical skills that are expected to be learned at the end of the program. So, pwede nga umabot sa level 2 talaga. Ang isa ko lang na comment na nabili ko ay yung, yung scale mo. If you look at your scale, medyo bias ang scale mo. Hindi ka may bias yung scale mo. <laughs> Kasi yung scale mo ay uh, tatlong, tignan mo ha, tatlong satisfied, dalawa lang yung not satisfied. <laughs> Look, nakawa niyo yung bias mo. Kahit saan ka pumunta ng konti, satisfied pa rin na pumunta ng konti. Naman niya? So, you have to have equals, equal dito yun. Oo, oh, oh, kasi ito ay, parang kung gusto mo, di tatlo rin ang satisfied or disappointed lang. Yes, so, right? undecided yung third. Oo, oh, oo, oh, oo. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, may undecided pa sa ilalim? Uh, not satisfied. Tingnan mo, ang dalawa lang, tatlong satisfied, parang 
Isa na lang yung pipiliin mo yung nag-satisfy eh. So, that will not cost the bias. More of your tools, not necessarily good. Uh, so, be very careful with your instruments, ha? Make sure that it's equal in terms of its provision of, uh, especially for that kind of metals, ordinals. Okay, thank you. I think you can suggest, you can say, Dr. Nev, kanina, about looking also at competi competencies or clinical skills. Um, it, it's very noticeable with the open-ended questions because those are the things that they highlighted about the rotation more than just exposure to the to the practice, but the doing the skills. So, that is the Now, I'm going to Benji. I'm good Pilipino is because it's not toxic. But when you look at the result, you can see that it's a yung pinay ng issue eh, hindi pala yun ang pinakiisa sa kanila eh. Hindi ako pumunta dyan dahil pinayin niyan. Optional pa yun? Optional, no? Anong option mo? Anesthesia or? Hindi ba sir eh, nakapatawagin yung video. Ah, so hindi siya masturbate? Hindi sir. Eh, ano natin naman, hindi siya masturbate? I don't know, I mean, is that standard sa ABS? Okay, thank you. So now we move on to our next uh, presenter. She'll be uh, discussing with us her paper on um, evaluation of the curriculum of principles of microbiology course. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Maria Margarita Good morning. Elliot Eisner, a leading scholar of arts and education, proposed that experienced experts, like critics of the arts, bring their expertise to bear on evaluating the quality of program. Today, I will present one of the oldest forms of evaluation, which is an expert-oriented evaluation that aims to critic one of our subjects in the Department of Medical Microbiology. Allow me to present the evaluation of the curriculum of the principles of microbiology. Education plays a crucial role in the development of every individual from childhood to adulthood. The importance of education has been well emphasized by society to prepare one to succeed in the future. Through the years, the curricula have evolved to develop the most effective way of learning, particularly here in the Philippines, we already have outcome-based education, or OPE. According to Spady, it is a comprehensive approach to organize and operate an educational system that is focused on and defined by the successful demonstration of learning sought from each student. Therefore, it is student-centered and students' learning serves as the focus of educational system. In the Philippines, the Commission on Higher Education provides the OBE topology to be adopted by all institutions. The shift from inputs-based to an outcome-based education will put students as the center of all educational planning. In the case of the University of the Philippines, the president has instructed that all autonomous campuses to embrace the shift and begin transforming their course outlines to the OPE format. Together with the CHED directive, it is expected that the UP will join the global shift of health and medical <coughs> education in producing students with characteristics that are valuable for the 21st century. Furthermore, as a member of our ASEAN or the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the Philippines is also expected to actively lead in the global call for transformation or transformative education. And in this way, students will be prepared to meet national as well as professional standards and eventually can be recognized in other member nations. Through this, the country will be able to offer quality degree programs that would meet world-class standards and produce graduates with lifelong learning and competencies, such that our graduates will have equal opportunities to compete in the global arena. Let me now introduce to you my evaluation the principles of microbiology course. In the pursuit of medical technology, learning microbiology is a crucial aspect. 
in the practice of the field of medical technology. Acquiring the skills, the knowledge in microbiology will prepare the students for their technical competency in the clinical laboratory test. The course comprises basic knowledge and skills on microbiology as well as immunology intended for public health undergraduates. It offers the general characteristics of physiology um, and genetics of microorganisms, particularly your bacteria, viruses, as well as fungi, in association, of course, to disease causation. Likewise, it includes basic principles in immunity in relation to host response and medical conditions. To supplement the activities of lectures, the students will perform basic laboratory procedures to aid in the differentiation of your organisms and relate these principles given into applicable skills in the laboratory. All of this knowledge and skills will equip the students of the necessary learning and experience in preparation for other courses they will take in the public health um, program, particularly public health microbiology. And the purpose of this evaluation is that at this time, there is still no formal evaluation of the course since we revised it two years ago. The comments on evaluations that were done regularly were never discussed within the department. Lectures were only given a copy when they requested this uh, from the head. Likewise, some of the exercises that are being used have been obsolete. Therefore, there is a need to evaluate whether the revised course also adheres to our OPE format as recommended uh, by our new by our educational system. To answer our evaluation question, is the principles of microbiology course of the Department of Medical Microbiology conducted in the OBE format? And what are the features of this curriculum that makes it OBE? The general objectives are, or is, to evaluate the principles of microbiology course based on the OBE format. Specifically, we will determine the outcome-based characteristics as well as identify the strengths and the weaknesses of the course. In terms of the approach, we are using the informal evaluation. At present, there is still no standard set standards to be followed to determine whether a particular health curriculum or course is in an OBE format. The definition and criteria of OBE have been well discussed, but an actual assessment tool to define OBE standards of a course still needs to be established. The use of experts will allow professional judgment on the adherence to OBE, which is based on their knowledge and their vast experience in the subject matter. Therefore, using experts in the field of OBE to evaluate this course will be most appropriate. The study design is an expert evaluation, particularly your college your review. The investigator will be identified, will be, uh, that the investigator will identify the expert in the field of OBE, someone who has uh, a vast experience in teaching and also in outcome-based education. He will be chosen based on the knowledge, involvement, and proficiency in the practice of OBE. Upon the approval of our expert to participate, who will now be provided in the curriculum, and given enough time to review this course or document. The investigator will now conduct the interview to gather information on the compliance to your OBE uh, of this course. So who was the connoisseur? The connoisseur is Dr. Erlin Sana. Dr. Sana is a professor in health professions education and um, she holds a PhD degree in Philippine studies and a master's in arts, of arts and teaching social science in UP Diliman. She began her teaching career as early as 1979, and later on she transferred to the National Teachers Training Center at UP Manila in 1994, where she served as college secretary and later on became your dean. She has many publications and awards under her name, and one of the um, publications that she she has is the Teaching and Learning in the Health Science Textbook, which is actually the Bible now of MHPE. 
And, it, and uh, recently, she also had a publication in the introduction of OBE in the Philippines, Health Professions Education Setting in 2015. The next slides are actually just the interview guide questions that I use for my experts, for my expert. And these are open-ended questions that will focus on the objectives, the strategies, as well as the assessment tools. There are several areas of the curriculum which was evaluated by the expert. First, let's talk about the learning objectives. The CMO 30 Series 2017 is already final, which actually states the PSG of the Mental Technology and Medical Laboratory Science Curriculum, which should be present in the curriculum of the PSPH program, as well as their PH151 course. However, in the terms of learning objectives, the course failed to address all eight program outcomes. It's just that some program outcomes cannot be uh, in the demonstrator performed, it was suggested that at least um, there will be some level of competency that can be achieved for each of the program outcome. Second, there was a lack of consistency of program outcomes with the learning objectives for both lecture and laboratory. Um, there is now a need to create a classroom and laboratory condition to make the students actually experience the course as a practicing medical technology uh, in the uh, PH151 course. In terms of your teaching and learning strategies, the teaching learning strategies need to be more learner-centered, participative. Students should learn to uh, work in teams and make them more responsible, such that they can use the TIPA uh, framework where they can do um, and they can adapt technology with their knowledge on subjects subject matter, such as search on online sites and even applications, which will all foster self-directed learning. In terms of the assessment tools, the availability of several assessment tools aside from your written exams was evident in the course. And likewise, there was also rubrics that were um, given as an example, which they used as assessment, instru uh, as assessment instruments for the um, ones that they have identified. Okay. In terms of the strengths of the course, the course is actually rich in content, and students will be exposed and given opportunities to engage in both analytical and critical thinking. Likewise, there are lecturers who are content experts wherein learners can expect a comprehensive coverage of the topics, as well as the team teaching approach can introduce to the students the actual collaborative and interpersonal training. However, it was still noted by the expert that the teach this course is still teacher-centered with lecture and laboratory-based um, process or strategies. Moving on to the discussion, it is true that the official version or the traditional curriculum which OBE is replacing does not meet certain modern educational needs or expectations. It failed in the attainment of the skills learners need to learners need and the demand for the workplace. OBE, as defined by Biggs and Tang, says that approach OBE is an approach to education in which decisions about the curriculum are driven by the exit learning outcomes that the students should display at the end of the course. I would just like to emphasize that initially that we should really pay attention when we are. Um, forming our learning objectives that we need to always look at the program outcomes. In the recent study by Yuzaini, it's a meta-analysis of OBE implementation. Um, she mentioned that one basic principle among all the OBE implementation is that it should focus on the learning outcomes in preparing the students for professional practice. Therefore, program outcomes are actually essential and should be and should address the learning objectives in different levels of confidence, introduce, demonstrate, or perform. Likewise, your learning objectives is, uh, will have the following characteristics. It should describe the specific task. It should determine the content and the competency needed to achieve this program outcomes. And they will provide the building blocks for achieving higher level outcomes, higher level outcomes. OBE is a transformational perspective on the curriculum. 
such that it is learner-centered rather than teacher-centered. It offers a dialogue between the learner and your curriculum, such that it will interact with sources of um, knowledge, reconstructs this knowledge, and very important, to take responsibility of his or her learning. The teacher will act as a facilitator or a mediator in the teaching and learning situation. As, as pointed out by our expert, the teaching learning strategies need to be learner-centered, um, more participative, and should work in um, groups that will foster self-directed learning. OBE is an approach for teaching learning activities are developed to support your learning outcomes. That's why we have to be very conscious when we are devising or planning what strategies we will use, making sure that it will support our program outcomes. So with the program outcomes that has been stated by Chet, we have to, um, as mentioned, we have, but by the expert, we have to address all of this in different levels of competencies. OBE aims to assess the competencies in their totality. It takes a holistic approach in describing the competence of a learner in terms of using, in terms of knowledge, skills, value, as well as assessing competency by using a variety of assessment approaches to achieve your learning objectives. In fact, um, this also calls for a performance-based and an authentic assessment, which will lead us for learners to apply their knowledge, skills, and values in an integrated manner. In conclusion, um, OBE is a new paradigm. OBE should be present from the beginning up to the end. It should be uh, placed in our lesson plan, in our teaching um, strategies, as well as the assessment of our students. And the, our conclusion for this evaluation states that the course seems to be teacher-centered, lecture and laboratory-based. If these strategies persist, this is far from being OBE. There should be expanded opportunities to learn. The course should be able to relate with other courses and put them into application level with, um, where there are clinical scenarios. So as educators, the most difficult challenge for our students, uh, for us, is actually for our students to learn effectively. And this will entail who they become after completing their program. Let us use evaluation of programs as a means to improve the way our courses are being offered to ensure that our students can achieve lifelong learning. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Lota. <laughs> uh, any questions? Yeah, um, thank you for your presentation, Dr. Lota. Um, uh, na off lang ako kasi I really appreciate your in-depth discussion of OBE. However, I was hoping that you could have tied that up with the expert evaluation of the course. So instead of doing that, we were discussing more of what OBE is, but I, I was hoping that it would have been an application of of those concepts to the course. So that's what I really missed out on. And, and I'm just not sure, is the third curriculum uh, used properly here? Or do, because when you say curriculum, I'm talking of a, a, a program, right? But this one is just a course, violation of the curriculum. So you evaluated just the subject, right? Yes. Just the course. Yeah. So actually, malulugi ka talaga dun sa evaluation ng OBE kasi nga the, the outcomes is for the whole program. So hindi siya talaga masasagot ng isang course. So I wasn't sure if, um, I mean, I think it would have been better if you had seen, if you had evaluated the entire program beside the OBE, but sige. Okay lang sa akin na course. Okay lang sa akin na course. Pero yun nga, look, but obvious yun from the start na hindi mo makukuha yung outcomes na yun. And then, yeah, for me, what I miss is how you could have probably changed the course or even just what plans you have for the course concretely 
based on the evaluation of your connoisseur, Madam Sana. And yun sana ito question yun. Sino yung connoisseur mo dyan? Pero wala akong question. <laughs> she's, she's best person to evaluate using um, the OBE because she worked a lot. I think you could have also mentioned that in her, um, what do you call it? Um, her expertise because she worked a lot with the TED it will be included in our uh, final report. And likewise, ma'am, the relation, unfortunately, because of the, uh, I'm already going over time, I couldn't anymore um, put the other, um, uh, what's this, the relation at the, during the presentation. But I will take that into consideration and place it in our written report. Okay, I, I think, uh, yeah, connoisseurship is an important, an important, uh, what do you call it, approach here. Uh, but uh, I think it's also important to, within the, the, the steps that you mentioned, no? If you were able to reach an agreement in terms of, hindi kasi ito, why is this color source? It is not color free, right? It is not a color free evaluation. It will have to be, uh, will have to be a very definite area of where you want to check it. Kaya dapat, yung sinasabi ka din niya siguro ay, doon sa paggamit mo ng, uh, yung paggamit mo ng OB discussion, would have been used also to identify criteria for eval, meaning that would have been the matrix, that would have been, yes. Halimbawa, ito yung characteristic ng OBE. Ito yung characteristic ng OBE1, characteristic 2, characteristic 3, characteristic 4. Uh, where, and if we have agreed that these are the characteristics, and probably the first step would have been a, also an expert technical panel on developing, sa ano to, sa bigger perspective lang, Developing the actual matrix for assessing first an op if a course or curriculum is obinized. Diba? Kasi ito ay obinization ito eh. <laughs> obinization of programs. So, pag sinabi natin obinized siya, baka yun na-miss natin, will it just cover, kaya na, na ano mo, no? will it just cover, for example, uh, appropriate use of taxonomy, right? Uh, but the taxonomy will also be dependent on where is it being positioned. Within the curriculum kasi, kailangan natin tignan kung yung taxonomy ay na-practice in the context of from within the session level. Kasi uh, may session level taxonomy. Baka appropriate naman siya kung le lesson level yun eh. Using, uh, eh, uh, using CHED's guideline na meron kang tatlo, which is program course at saka lesson, right? So, mukhang wala ka sa program, nandun tayo sa, sa course level and down below it. Pero ibig sabihin, uh, yun lang titignan. Kaya mahirap natin sabihin na na-achieve natin yung ano mo, kasi hindi natin nakita kung aling, aling batayan o anong basic framework ang ginagamit natin for evaluating it. For example, sinabi natin the method is not appropriate for that. Di ba ganun? Was that part of the being, the, is that part of the issue of curriculum OBE? Uh, ano ba talaga yung basic doon? No? Kasi paano ba talaga pinagmamatch yung pag sinabi natin hindi nagmamatch yung teaching strategy mo sa iyong, sa iyong statements? No? Will it be the curriculum or will it be, will it be the statement of LOs versus, di ba? Uh, kasi you have to also look into not only the philosophy of uh, OBE, but also the basic philosophy of end of teaching, like say, uh, objectives or outcomes determines TL. Outcome determines teaching learning strategies. And that would have been a major uh, thing. No? Kasi, alam ako, the next would be sequence, segment, sequencing, integration. These are all the things that siguro kailangan ilinaw mo na bago mag... I, I know that even with kahit naman tayo maghihingi ng connoisseurship sa like say cooking or something, competition, meron ka pa rin criteria na ibibigay. Kaya yung kaya sabi ko, this is a connoisseurship but not necessarily goal-free. Alam niyo yung goal-free? Goal-free model din, di ba may goal-free? That 
Para kung ano makita natin objective as we go along. Wala nang depende sa makita natin data. But this is not, I assume this is not goal free. This will be predetermined goals to to be addressed. So I think uh, to organize it, para pag resolve din, tingnan natin. One criteria, okay ba? Intended. So you look at OBE as the intentions, right? And you look at the observation as the outcome. So intent, again, it's always, evaluation is always about two things. Intent versus observe which is a stakeholder, uh, Tyler, uh, Tyler's model of, a stakeholder's, stakes model of uh, evaluation. Always the same perspective, huh? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Hello, One question lang po. Uh, yung College of Public Health, yung curriculum is based on the shared college of, I mean, shared it's actually one that is being considered, but because public health is not just medtech, so the program outcomes of the medtech may be reflected likewise. As a matter of fact, in the recent workshop, we actually made a different set of program outcomes. So College of Public Health and the Surgery Program Outcomes, and here now, you're evaluating your PH151, which is just a course, and I assume that there is a different course design than the course design I, I based on the curriculum of the College of Public Health. The course is actually based from the from the College of Public Health yes. uh, design uh, yes. curriculum. Mm -hmm. Check. Okay. So, ang, ang question ko lang man, since in course design ngayon ng College ng PH151, who did the course design? Sorry, who did the course design po ng, P, ng PH151? Ma'am kami po sa department. As a department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kasi, uh, so it could also, uh, and this course design was the one you, you gave to Dr. Sana to yes. evaluate. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, ang question ko lang is, ma'am, kasi it could also be a factor since it's the, it's the department who designed the PH151 yung halimbawa yung alignment dito sa sa mga criteria ng OPE para when, when the design was uh, when the course was designed initially parang ba two years ago lang siya parang yung factor yung factor doon ay yung kayo as a department yung knowledge about the OPE yung mga ganyan yung kumbaga parang these are other factors to consider when you, when you design the course and here now, you're evaluating the course. So, parang yung knowledge ng lahat ng mga nag-design noon, yun din yung dapat ma-i-i-i. Parang kinasider din eh. Kaya parang failure yung nangyari doon sa parang sa evaluation ng design na parang hindi kayo naka-angkal doon sa outcomes. As as uh, the expert or as the person na parang parang evaluated the design. Parang ba yun? Parang ganun mo? Parang yung... Kung baga parang uh, yung nag-craft ng design, ano ba yung knowledge nila about OBE? And then here now, nag-produce yung design. And Dr. Sarah is evaluating the course. Tapos ang, 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 ang result ng, ng, ng study mo, if, if I get it right, failure. Kasi hindi nag-i-fail ko ng mga Not really total failure, uh, but it will need it. Um, the assumption of the faculty, because in the past uh, several years, we've been having OBE seminars also for the faculty. So more or less, no, they were they will be oriented on what OBE is. So mayro na mas siya pinagdadalhin na regarding um, OBE. So um, we should have the same framework, time time um, mind frame. Oh, mind frame. What should be? Whether on how our course should be. That's why we wanted to review whether it's already compliant or it will still need to be improved. Uh, uh, I think the one important thing that should be uh, realized that this is not about uh, pass or fail issue because this is not a this is not a this is not a Although it's a criteria reference way, because there will be uh, guidelines. Kaya nga sabi manina, mas maganda kung 
Kaya ang presentation ito, wala hindi ka pwede mag ano, so one tip eh. Ang ano mo lang dito ay descriptive na. Based objectives, are they compliant? This particular, are they... So, it could be a dimension of uh, compliance between the... Kaya mahal na yung, ano eh, mahal na yung, yung evaluation uh, matrix eh, nasaan siya titignan. Kasi pwede, you're not looking at it sa in total. Pwede di ba, oh. But our recommendation is very specific, eh? matching between strategy and outcome. Uh, uh, objective and objective and correct appropriateness of uh, taxonomy or dimension use, di ba? So kung ganun, pati ang result ko, ganun ka lang mag-describe. Hindi mo i-describe yung failed or something. And that, um, that can be avoided by using that kind of... Uh, parang pang nagaya. Kasi ang level ito, parang accreditation eh. Kasi you assess it to... Pwede naman natin isama ito na i-approve na ang CPAs ay really OBE compliant. Compliance kasi ang pinag-usapan eh. So probably the, the summarization would be degree of compliance or or develop sila ng matrix ng... No, no, one of the things that you have developed would be if they will not develop a matrix for compliance. So like very compliant to non-compliant. Parang ganong level. Para hindi natin titignan sa negative na failure, I think that will be more useful at saka siyempre, mas samanig tingnan sa kung ikaw na nagsalabi mo yung failure eh. Mas maganda yung ano na lang, yung ganong level na lang na issues, very specific. Yes, that's the regard students' competence, the Objective Structured Clinical Examination, or OSCE, is one of the tools that can be used. This year, um, De La Salle has been using the OSCE for so many years now, but this year, the first ever Grand OSCE was conducted for all the graduating clerks and was coordinated by the Medical Education Unit of DLSI, DLSHSI. So the comprehensive exam for clinical clerks is actually composed of the written examination, which is 50% of the total grade for the clinical clerks. And this is uh, composed of 500 item MCQ, plus the grand OSCE, which is only 30%, which is a 16 station exam, and the portfolio, which is 20%. So the comprehensive exam is based on the 10 program outcomes um, for doctors, mandated by the CHED, um, in line with the OBE curriculum that they have required all institutions to shift to. So the grand, uh, um, the grand, the comprehensive exam, the objectives of that is based on the 10 program mandated by the CHED. So the grand OSCE itself has the four objectives in line with the 10 program um, outcomes. 
So these are first competently managed clinical conditions of patients in various settings. Second, to convey information in written and oral formats. Third is to update oneself through a variety of avenues for personal and professional growth to ensure quality health care and patient safety. And the last, to adhere to national and international codes of conduct and legal standards that govern profession. So the Grand Oske is a one-day event. It was held at the Animo Center of De La Salle. There were 252 clinical clerks, and they were divided into two batches, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. So 100 consultants per session um, were in, were uh, took part as facilitators in the OSCE. <laughs> Eight consultants were manning the written exam. So, um, so as not to share information between the two groups, while the, half, the first half was taking the OSCE, the other half was taking the written exam. So in the afternoon, there was a reverse. So the other half took the OSCE, and then the other half took the written exam. So there was no point wherein the students met, and then um, and then there were no chance for them to share the answers to the exams. So there were five OSCE sets. Each set has 16 task stations and 14 rest stations. Um, each station was provided with a task for the students, materials to be used in case for a, a skill, um, to perform a skill, checklist for the faculty, facilitator's guide, and the answer sheets. And the questions or tasks per station were formulated, deliberated, and decided upon after several meetings by the members of the MEU, which were all consultants, um, medical doctors in, uh, from De La Salle University. So the purpose of the evaluation is to determine whether the Grand OSCE was able to achieve its objectives. So, um, yeah, to, uh, able to achieve its objectives. And uh, um, this is an external evaluation because all the evaluators were not connected with MEU. Um, it's a formative evaluation since this is the first ever um, Grand OSCE and they plan to do it every year. So they, they wanted to know if there could be improvements to be done with the type of questionings that they do. Um, yeah. So I've used the Tyler evaluation because this approach um, determines whether objectives um, of the activity has been met or has been achieved. So my evaluation question was, um, did the 16 tasks for the students able to achieve the objectives of the Grand OSCE? And which among the objectives does a particular question address? So th these are the questions I asked um, or when I interviewed my, um, my um, interviewee. So, so the data, um, basically I took the blueprint from the uh, blueprint of the comprehensive exam, wherein I got the list of the objectives and the system the 16 tasks for the students. Um, I had uh, two questions which I uh, got, um, which I used to interview the three experts. And um, there was a feedback after the OSCE. Um, so I used that feedback from the students as, uh, as part of the evaluation. Sorry. Um, so uh, this is the, the table of specifications from the, comp uh, from the Grand OSCE. So on the first column were the objectives, the four objectives. The middle column is um, the task that the students need to perform or to be able to do in order to achieve the objective. And you can see the last column is the weight. So majority of the questions were basically competency um, or based on the first objective, which is more on the competency level of the students. So my evaluators were take, um, basically are doctors from La Salle. The first is um, Dr. Helido, who is um, head of the patient safety department of DLSHSI. Um, he is the current dean of um, St. Cambridi Medical School and is an active oncology surgeon at DLSUMC. Um, next is uh, Dr. Reyes, who is the head of the laboratory medicine um, and an active journal surgeon at DLSUMC as well. Um, both of them took their MH PED from UST and they graduated magna cum laude at that time. And um, the last is um, Dr. Benjamin Balmoris, um, who is an active anesthetist and intensivist at TLS-UMC. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, vice chairman of clinic <laughs> clinical operation of an the anesthesia department and head of the anesthesia department of at Pagamutan ng Dasmariñas, which is a new government hospital in, Cavi in Dasmariñas, Cavite. So um, for the results, so I've um, interviewed the three experts. 
So I've asked them um, if the, the questions addresses the, the objectives. So these are the first column, the stations. These are the topics of the questions. So there were um, one OB case, one pedia case, two surgery cases, um, four internal medicine cases, and five were about skills, and there's one for communication, um, which is breaking the bad news. So uh, as you can see, most of them fall on the first objective, which is competency. So which is really the goal of um, the Grand OSCE is to develop the, the student's competency level. And um, aside from that, there were also comments from the, the experts. One is, um, they say that, uh, one said that some of the questions are not really um, um, for OSCE, because it's more of an MCQ. So, because uh, one of the question is to just identify or to diagnose and list the differential diagnosis. So he, he asked um, whether it's really an OSCE question or a plain and simple MCQ question. And um, one said that there are some, some questions lack um, important steps like um, introducing self to patient and getting consent. So there have been inconsistencies in the way the steps have been, um, like in dealing with the patients. Some, w some questions would, um, part of the question would be to uh, introduce oneself, but the other questions didn't really um, put importance on the, onto that step. And he said that um, include skills in the first objective, because uh, in, the, in the other slide that I've presented here, um, it doesn't, in the first objective, it doesn't mention about skills, where it should actually fall on the competency level. It's just basically um, history taking and physical examination and arriving at the di diagnosis. So he said that it sh skills should be added on as a fifth um, task. And um, with regards to the um, feedback from the students, um, there was a question about objectives. The first was the objective of the OSCE exam. It's a Likert exam with four points. Um, one is strongly disagree, two is disagree, three is agree, four is strongly agree. So the, for the question, the objective of the OSCE exam is clear to me. They have um, rated it as 3.62 out of four. So it's quite high. And then the objectives were met throughout the conduct of the exam, and they, they gave the same rating of 3.62. So I guess um, <laughs> the, the objective has been met. So for my conclusions, um, the questions were aligned with the objectives of the Grand OSCE. And some questions ad address more than one objective, and they pertain mostly to competency. And the um, recommendation is um, improve on the question construction. So make sure that it's um, more of cases so that it develops the critical thinking of um, the students and not just um, identification or um, uh, recall. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations for finishing before time, not like the others. Like <laughs> time up now. Uh, any questions from the panel? Um, hi. I wasn't here when you started, Ruth. Uh, were you part of the group that organized the Oscar? Uh, no, ma'am. No. I know. Because that is such a grand production, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, what I like most about Tyler and the goal-oriented is it's so straightforward. Just look at the objectives and see that you've achieved it. And um, I believe that uh, based on your purposes of doing this and seeing if you can pursue it or uh, continue it in the next years, hopefully, that you're doing it correctly by, by um, looking at the objectives and if you're fulfilling your objectives. So I think that you were able to lay out that out very clearly to me, and I understood your purpose and uh, the process that you went through. <coughs> and I like your expert uh, uh, external panel, even if one was coerced <laughs> with a divorce. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that that uh, that that also showed your objectivity in the evaluation process. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, that the whole that the whole process was okay for me and good. So it's nice now. Once in a while, we see evaluation of evaluations <laughs> or assessment. Now, uh, can I just go to the blueprint that you have? <coughs> so.
so content obtain uh, is there a blueprint that would tell us about actual stations st station design uh, collection these are contents so uh, but to talk about act para meron ka pang isang pinakita kanina yan i think this is the the, the actual case scenario for the for the station and the uh, and the ex excess there are basically uh, their their the objectives if, if if addressed the four objectives yes sir one two three four yung four all to be remind to remind us i uh just not Sir, yung four. Ito, ito yung um, four. Okay. Adhere to national and international codes of conduct and legal standards. Okay. That okay. Provide and can we go back to the, 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 the previous breaking bad news, interpret x rays? Or so. Because to me, this will be the more important data in the. It could have been, it could be already included as your part of the blueprint. I don't know, uh, uh, sample dito sa, dito sa yung yung matrix kanina. Uh, it, it would provide more description on the matrix. Um, tapos sinasabi nga dito kung na-address na-address yung case scenario. So do you have a significant, were you able to run a uh, inter-rater reliability here? Sir, no. Because there will be raters, right? You have three raters. Yes. And you talk about uh, different ratings. So we because we are looking into where they are congru where they are agree where they agree and where they did not agree because that will be the more important because we go into formative assessment then we will try to see bakit hindi sila nag agree sa, sa case na to uh, hindi nag agree then probably anong issue dito sa because since you mentioned this is formative yes. so that when you develop next time a case scenario you will be able to see what will be i think it's also important that this can help you develop um, criteria for for evaluating a case scenario of, uh, and its congruence to the uh, intended measurements kasi ang issue kasi dito sa OSCE na to ay validity yes. so pag sinabi ba nating nag-agree yung lahat yan gumanda ang ating rating is it valid will it test kasi yun ang issue naman sa test eh lalo sa OSCE will this station be a correct a valid representation or will the will the inference that I will make from the result of this in performance in this station a valid inference? Uh, so, pwede kasing based on the perf kaya maganda rin mo dito sa experts mo, makita rin natin yung result ng mga students individually sa, uh, as a group dito sa bawat stations and we see also reliability scores uh, within the, so we have the actual who took the test and we see how they perform there kung napakilaki ng deviations napakilaki ng yung yung standard deviation ay masyadong wide uh, ibig sabihin may problema rin tayo in terms of their own interpretation of the station bakit iba-iba ang reading ng mga estudyante sa ibig nilang kuning na minimeasure na na competency natanong ba natin parang nag nag-agree din ba ang estudyante na yun ngayon especially for formative ano Madali kasi itong pag-usapan sa MCQs. Kasi MCQs, padala, tignan mo lang, tama yung dimension, tama yung, ang, tama yung taxonomy na ginamit mo, tama yung MCQ format na ginamit mo for that. So, kanon din dito. So, kasi ito, reliability, ang makukuha lang natin dito ay reliability, nag a sila, but it will not tell you if it is a valid, that this case is a valid case. Diba? Pwede kami kasi mag-agree, Dr. Balmores, eh. mag-agree kami na, o oh, okay yan, level, ano, in-address niya yung objective number four. Will that be equal to saying it's a valid question or a valid station? So, siguro yun ang tingnan natin paano pa ma-enrich yung statistical handling para ma-ano natin, na ma-address natin yung valid, reliable, at saka pinaka-importante Kasi dito ay tinignan mo lang yung ano eh, stations. Pina, isang pinaka-importante, anong pinaka-importante karakteristik ng OSCE? Anong kanyang, bakit siya inimbento? To remove what? Subject. Bakit inimbento yung OSCE? To, for one, for practical examination, what is the most common comment before? Bias. Subjectivity, bias. Now, did it really reduce, re resulted, it, was it really an objective? 
did you really remove objectivity? So, kaya magandang tignan din, aside from those, pati yung instruments, yung rating scales na ginamit, baka naman hindi rin siya nakakapag ano, ng objective, baka marakis pa rin yung bias, interpretation of performance. Kasi gusto natin matanggal, yun ang mahalaga dito eh, matanggal yung personal bias sa pagre-rate. Nakawin So, nakita natin kung ito nga i-evaluate nga ito ng ating objective-oriented, I hope you would also go to that, that indeed, the tools that you used uh, corrected the issue of subjectivity in rating. Right? Um, yun. Tapos yung last, ay dun sa pag-mention mo ng MCQ versus OSCE questions, ano ba yun? Minirate ka na comments about more of na some questions are more are for MCQ exam not OSCE actually OSCE OSCE station questions can be MCQ hindi yun ang issue eh. the more important issue is is that MCQ question related to the station to the station that was utilized ano halimbawa okay lang yung kahit MCQ question dumaan siya sa isang patient so labas ay which of the following is the most appropriate differential diagnosis for the case? MCQ yun. But still, that's the most important follow-up, follow-through question for the case. Pero if the question is independent of the station, yun may problema tayo. So can you guarantee me, for example, that all the MCQ questions can only be answered after, after I went through the case, the station? Kasi if this question can be answered without going through the case, this is not a useful question because it cannot relate to the same. Remember, a station question should follow a performance station. And therefore, the question station will have to ask question relevant to the performance station. Not question first, then before performance. Diba? Performance, kasi pwede magtanong ka ng isang bagay na nakita niya because nag-perform siya ng isang procedure. Ngayon, so yun ang mga dapat nating titignan no? within the context of OSCE. So you look at the, is it, an, did it, was it a valid test? Uh, did we obtain reliable results? And uh, are, are our, uh, are, have we observed real, the real objectivity in the performance of the test? Okay? Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Ruth. And our last presenter, uh, makakain na tayong lahat, <laughs> is Dr. Perry Wagan Adorable. She will be presenting her paper entitled Evaluation of Harrison's Diabetic Lecture in Preparing Medical Residents of the Medical City Batch 2017-2018 for Training Examination. So, good afternoon to everybody. Um, good afternoon to our judges, to our to my colleagues and to my mentor. So I am the last to present. I am Perry Adorable Wagan. I am here to give you my presentation and it is entitled Evaluation of Harrison's Didactic Lecture in Preparing Medical Residents in the Medical City uh, for the three batches, the first, second year, and third batches, so 2017 to 2019, for the in-training examination using stakes consonance model. So Harrison's Didactic Lecture is a program of the Department of Internal Medicine and it's designed to achieve the basic knowledge on the most common and uncommon diseases in medicine. It's pathophysiology management and outcome. It is the reference textbook of residents taking internal medicine and it is also the main reference for the in-training specialty examinations and the specialty board examination. The primary goal of the training committee, oops, sorry. The primary goal of the uh, training committee is to pass the RIT examination and achieve the goal of 100% passing in the peace beam, such that the didactic Harrison's uh, guide lecture aimed to uh, prepare the residents for this examination. 
So the object of evaluation is the Harrison's Didactic Lecture. And uh, Harrison's Didactic Lectures are presented by the graduating third year medical residents held every Friday. Fro formative examinations are given after each lecture to evaluate them and prepare them for residency in training examination, which is held yearly. The evaluation will be useful for the training program, and it is a self-initiated evaluation. No sponsors participated in this evaluation. Um, uh, the rationale and the purpose of the evaluation is that it is needed to assist the training committee in making well-informed decisions about the strengths and weaknesses of the activity. And the purpose is that if the Harrison's didactic lecture contributes to increase the chance of passing the residence in training examination or the RITE. As an evaluator, I use the approach, the stakes consonants model. Uh, it is uh, a model that links the antecedent, the processes, and the outcome. The state continent contended that the program evaluation should be reported in a rich detailed description of the program with judgment about its strengths and weaknesses, including recommendations and for improvement. The goal is to achieve by looking at all aspects of the program, including the pre-existing condition or the antecedents, processes or referred to as the transactions, and the outcome. Uh, this is the, the only way to get a true picture of what the program is like is to become involved in the program and include the responses and reactions of the participants in the program in the data collection. Therefore, the application of the stakes model produces a descriptive study based on the naturalistic inquiry and a goal-oriented approach. It is a characteristic of linking and a goal orient, uh, a characteristic uh, linking of different phases of the program. It also looks at the relationships or contingencies among the variables. The use of this evaluation is to search for the relationship uh, that permit the improvement of education. The evaluator's task is one of identifying the outcomes that are contingent upon the particular uh, antecedent condition and the instructional uh, transactions. So for the impact of the program to be fully understood, it must be thoroughly described and judged. Using state countenance model, it may be a useful tool to structure evaluations of other existing programs which have been implemented for years but has not been implemented, evaluated. So my evaluation objective is to determine if Harrison's didactic lecture is an effective learning activity in achieving a passing grade in the specialty examination, to provide formative feedback, and to gain insight on the resident's perception of the activity, and also to find out the deficiencies of the activity and provide recommendations for improvement. Uh, the data collection is a mixed method or what we call the triangulation of data based on Kratwald, it is defined as triangulation, as the process of using more than one source to confirm information. So confirming data from different sources, the annual report of the training officer, the grading sheets of the weekly Harrison-based quizzes of 2017, the PCP residency in training examination scores of the year 2015 and 2016. Confirming observations from different observers, uh, interviewing the residents, the training officer, the consultant, and even the department secretary. Confirming information from different data collection methods, an open-ended uh, interview, focus group discussion, and review of the department's internal records. Our participants were all medical residents. They were selectively chosen. There were 46 medical residents. Uh, but only 20 uh, of the medical residents were uh, selected. Uh, from the third year level, there are five. Two of them are the key informant, or those are uh, directly in charge of the Harrison's didactic lecture. For the second year, we have four. For the first year, we have five. There was one uh, training officer and one consultant in charge. For the data analysis, the qualitative and quantitative techniques were used in this research. Uh, manual qualitative analysis using the Word document and descriptive analysis uh, used to describe uh, quantitative data like attendance and the scores of the formative examinations. So this is how the, um, uh, the uh, continence uh, matrix looks like. So uh, it, has, uh, it is a description and a judgment matrix. So the antecedent component of the model investigates the pre-existing conditions that may affect the outcome of the program. So I will be discussing a uh, horizontal um, 
uh, discussion of the matrix. So the evaluator reviewed the background history from 2015 and compared it on the ongoing, uh, ongoing uh, lectures for the first quarter of 2017. Uh, it also con uh, included the program content and resource uh, availability. So for the lectures, the lectures were presented by the third year medical residents that were held weekly and attended by the first and third year medical resident except the second year who were specialty rotators. Uh, for the observation, the lectures were presented by the residents were actually similar but were not presented in a timely fa fashion. Fixed schedule were not being followed and there were months or weeks with no lectures. As the evaluator's uh, standard, didactic lectures should be presented by the 30 medical residents, attended by all the medical residents. It should be held weekly with a protected time to allow residents to uh, have quality listening and learning time during the didactic lecture. The, uh, for the judgment, uh, evaluator's judgment, the didactic lectures reported by the third year medical resident should be supervised by a clinical facilitator to provide guidance during the lecture. Attendance of the medical resident should also be checked and protected times should also be strictly implemented. Um, in the uh, quiz is given after the lecture, but as the observation, the quiz were not regularly given since test constructions were done by the resident itself, the one who is reporting. Some were not unable to give it on the day of their lecture, and in effect, that, uh, there were times that there were no lec uh, quizzes that were given at the end of the lecture. The delay in the quiz were no longer taken or rescheduled. Uh, as an evaluator standards, the quiz should be given uh, every after the lecture. A consultant should be assigned for test construction to avoid missing any quiz. For example, if the topic is asthma, a pulmonologist should do the test construction. Uh, judgment, uh, program head should be appointed to oversee and monitor activities and scheduled should be uh, properly implemented. This is the uh, review of the 2015 RIT examination. Uh, taken by the second year and third year in the 2015, the uh, MPL is 70%. Uh, as you can see in the bar graph, uh, second year, uh, net 15 residents, and for the third year, there were 11 residents. And uh, all of the residents who took the RITE were all above, uh, just all above 70% of the MPL. So comparing to the current, uh, the intent now is the didactic lectures still be presented by the third year medical residents, uh, still held weekly every Friday at 12 noon. A protected time was now uh, implemented to allow medical residents to maximize their time for the lecture. Uh, as the observation, the quizzes were now given regularly after the lecture. Test constructions were done by the assigned consultant per topic. Uh, in effect, the quiz were constantly given after the lecture and there were no tests delayed noted. Uh, for the evaluator standards, a formative assessment is given to monitor the resident's learning and to provide ongoing feedback that can be used by the training committee to improve the teaching methods and to evaluate the learnings of the resident. And uh, more specifically, uh, the formative assessments will help residents to identify their strengths and weaknesses and target topics that need work and this will help the training committee to recognize where residents are struggling and address problems immediately. For the judgment, the construction of the quiz by the consultant were efficiently implemented after the didactic lectures. Uh, the program content, the lectures were taken from the Harrison's uh, uh, current edition. One hour was allotted for the time, the lecture, and the quiz. And uh, for the observation, the content were all taken from the Harrison textbook. There were no reference, other reference used. Uh, there was ample time used for the lecture and the quiz. And the specific disease for lecture per didactic, for example, if it's pulmonary only, the asthma was selected for the lecture. Um, the standards, uh, as an evaluator, the content of the lectures uh, additional reference may be used to further enhance the concept of the pathophysiology. Lectures should convey understanding, not merely comply, com copying verbatimly. One hour of lecture is appropriate to cover for one topic. Uh, didactic lectures can still be a primary method of instruction in a medical and higher education. And however, the challenge in the traditional lecture is that its ability to affect uh, learning outcomes of knowledge, retention, student satisfaction, synthesis, and elaboration of knowledge. Um, another um, 
program and dissident is the resource uh, availability. Uh, the department office is the venue for the lecture. The projector should be available and working, and the office space should also accommodate all the residents. Uh, though there was no really problem with the office, but uh, the space is limited to accommodate uh, half of the residents, so sometimes it's become crowded. For the uh, program content uh, as a standard, uh, another vital aspect of effective learning is uh, learning environment. And attention to the learning environment must be given importance and must remove all the barriers of lecture and learning, such as noise, ill ventilation, insufficient light, and the sound system. As a judgment, an environment that is still conducive for learning as is a one of the valuable factors that contributes to an effective learning. Now we'll move on to the transaction, and these are the dynamic encounter and processes occurring during the operation of the program. This includes, as an evaluator, I included the program participation, the time and schedule, interaction, and the resident's behavior. So for the uh, intent, the third year resident still presents the topic assigned. All the residents required to attend the lecture, and the lecture must be organized and systematic with emphasis on the important knowledge to be remembered. Most senior residents provided the lecture, the pre-assigned months ahead before the uh, scheduled lectures, and the lectures were regularly held every uh, Friday. Uh, the lecture format as a standard evaluator, uh, the didactic uh, lecture are traditional method of teaching which can be effective if modified with interactive participation of the residents. A well-prepared didactic lecture presented in a manner most understood by most residents. And the same as the judgment, uh, didactic lectures can still be effective in uh, affecting the learning outcomes of knowledge retention. So attendance is mostly 90%. Uh, it should be checked, absent, without excuses. Should be so should submit a written explanation or given demerit. But those rotating in the ICU, ACSO, ERA, MP, M duties were exempted from attending the lectures. So emphasis is on the value of the didactic lecture should be reiterated. The consultant should be reminded of the protected R to reframe pulling out the residents for the rounds. And residents uh, attending the code uh, is the only one should be exempted. There are also observations that during the lecture, the first year residents are conducting their outpatient who were not able to attend the lecture. The second years are also called by the consultants for round and they have difficulty to excuse themselves. So protected time for the residents were not strictly uh, implemented. And so for the standard, uh, there should be the presence of a uh, consultant as a facilitator uh, will uh, further expound the areas that needs to clarify during their lecture. Um, and also a consultant as a judgment, uh, acting as a facilitator will help bridge the gap in knowledge retention for uh, knowledge retention and comprehension. Uh, the program time and schedule, um, uh, it is now regularly held and it was fixed to every, every other Friday and the rest, the schedule was promptly implemented. Canceled lectures were allowed during department events or official workshops and the scientific conventions. The type of the lecture, uh, however, was given during the time when the residents were sleepy or usually after eating, so their alertness was uh, actually not, they were not actually, most of them were not actually alert during the lectures. Uh, dedicated time and date of the week for the didactic lecture and limit to only one hour. For the judgment, the scheduled lecture should be routinely checked and the program head should be informed of the canceled lectures. Um, interaction of the residents um, uh, required theoretical knowledge. It is an effective method used to teach the residents who are unable to organize their work. So it's a one-way lecture with less interaction from the residents and there were lectures that were less engaging some of the um, uh, explanations were verbatim. So for the standard evaluation, uh, steps in delivering an effective lecture should start with captivating statements, which will excite the residents about the lecture. The statement should be clearly outline the purpose of the lecture. The residents should also be encouraged to be active participants during the lecture. And for the judgment, uh, it needs to, the purpose of the lecture needs to be stated to prompt the residents to be engaged and to seek their immediate attention. 
and to review the lecture objective that challenged the residents a set of expectations. This also builds up curiosity and clearly outlines their role in meeting those expectations. For the interaction, so for the intent, it involves the active engagement, residents' participations, and the feedback. Uh, as the, for the observation, there were less participation of the residents as a one-way lecture, and those were not lectures were unable to capture the attention of the residents. So it's important that the uh, there's an active engagement is encouraged, and uh, the lecture should allow opportunities for the residents to exchange questions and answers and provide strategies to stimulate the student by posing questions at the beginning of the lecture for the residents to think just what we are being taught in the practicum. So for the judgment, cap capturing and maintaining the attention of the residents, the active participation of the resident instructor, uh, residents questioning, student discussion, and formative quizzes with immediate feedback can uh, characterize an effective lecture. For the behavior, um, the residents were, as an observation, the residents were either sleeping or texting. They were in and out during the lecture due to ward calls. Uh, the second year were mostly with a consultant during rounds. So for the resident's behavior as a uh, standard evaluator, a good lecturer is the one who assists residents to learn, influencing motivation and the autonomy of self-achievement. So if the residents are motivated, usually it depends on uh, what is being displayed by the reporter or the lecturer. So a less enthusiastic uh, lecturer also reflects a less enthusiastic resident. Uh, now let's move on to the outcome. Since the MPL was set by the RIT is 70%, uh, the quizzes uh, of the uh, at the end of the didactic lecture is a total of 21 quizzes. All of the MCQ started March of 2017 until September 2017. Uh, actually, no resident passed the MPL of 70%. And the failure rate would not affect their overall performance. It's just uh, um, uh, an evaluation after the lecture. So for the outcome performance, the outcome measures of Harrison's didactic lecture aim to achieve a passing rate of 70. Uh, the scores must be included in the overall performance, and it should also be a basis for the promotion. Since the performance of the current residents were different from the previous two batches, Harrison's lecture was their least of their priority since the scores of the quizzes were not included in the overall performance and it's not basis for their promotion. So the score should have a bearing on their final grade. So this is a bar graph representation of the uh, examination quizzes for the third year there are 14 residents for the second year there are 18 residents and for the first year there are 14 residents so 46 of them uh, did not actually meet the 70 percent passing grade um, for the perception the intent was to develop confidence in taking the rite but most of the residents actually they feel uh, they lack confidence in taking the RITE. They feel that the lectures and the quizzes did not improve their knowledge, retention, and recall. There were no feedback on the quizzes. There was no discussion on the answers. Uh, some of the residents were more of the visual learners, so graphical representation and the diagram would probably increase uh, the retention compared to just purely text format. They were frequently being called during uh, ongoing lecture, so their interest to learn and listen were interrupted. Some would feel that they would rather read than listen since they were most asleep during the lectures. So for the outcome standard evaluation, uh, a timely feedback for every quiz uh, to increase their knowledge retention and settles the confusion of what they think there is right. Time B feedback also provides discussion of the basic knowledge which were not thoroughly explained during the lecture. Residents should recognize the different types of learners and must address all types of learners to increase recall and understanding. So for the judgment, the timely feedback is uh, essential. So as for my recommendation, uh, a program head must be assigned to monitor and check the progress of the residents, the rating score, attendance, protected time. 
find a convenient time for the lecture where the residents are still active and alert. A supervision of the consult consultant per subspecialty topic should be present to facilitate the lecture rather than purely residents alone. This will allow more opportunity to ask questions, exchange ideas for a deeper understanding of the topic. Modify lectures to be more captivating, more interaction and active engagement of the residents. The score should have also more bearing on their final grade and should be included as a basis for promotion so residents will prioritize Harrison's lecture and will spend more time in reading the textbook. Timely feedback is very essential to enhance retention of the knowledge acquired, strength and weaknesses identified, such as resident can focus on the areas where they scored lowest. Mentoring should also be implemented to better give them directions and support, which will be critical in their well-being as a trainee and as a future specialist. And so when my residents fail during the quizzes, I, also I always tell them that I never lose, I either win or learn. So I think that is my last slide. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Um, may energy pa ba kayo? Nagugutom na tayo. Okay, so you used the steak model. So uh, I think one my major comment here is you mixed up uh, uh, the four columns. No? What should be... Can you go, just give me one sample of the, call of the, the mo model uh, here, for example. Uh, kasi yung intent natin ay, intent would be basically your plan, right? It, uh, would, I would assume that all of these are objectives of the program. Did you mention it as part of the objective of the Harrison program? Um, I just included, sir, in the in the matrix, so para walang redundancy. So ah, but they are the, na. natural naman yun, dapat all the intents will have to be the, yes, the, the objectives yes. uh, pro of the program, right? Mm -hmm. That's kasi yun ang intended outcomes mo eh. Observations. Ngayon, minsan nagkakaroon ka ng, nag, may mix up ka kung ang observation mo ay also a judgment. Mm -hmm. Kasi the intent is, like say, you say, uh, you will be, uh, the intent is at least 12 lectures for one semester, right? The observation is 12 lectures for that semester, right? Sabihin, it, the observation is supposed to be data, not, the observations are data, not uh, not judgment. So, hindi ka mag, uh, uh, unable to capture the attention of the residents. But rather, observation will be ratings in terms of ratings of the like rating 70% of speakers rated as as, as anesthesiologist uh, they they make you sleepy <laughs> so yung kanong uh, ano doon sa sa observation tapos yung standard ang ilalagay mo ay what will make what will help you make your judgment kung na-achieve mo o hindi halimbawa pag sinabi mo Maganda yung nasa, madali siguro dahil doon sa test mo. Pakita mo yung actual result ng uh, M -M -M -P, uh, actual result ng exam. Yan, 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 yung before that. Before that. Yung slide, yan. Kasi dito nakita mo, yung intent ay 70%, right? Yes. 70% of, uh, ano, 70% ng MPL, right? Yes, sir. O, pero, gusto mo ba ay 100% makapasa? Tama? Your intent is 100% of them will pass that the right, right? Yes. So therefore, your observation is 100% of them pass the right. Yes. And your standard is 100% of them will pass. Mm -hmm. And therefore, your judgment is, you have to make judgment based on if the observation basically follow the standards. Kasi if you are below the standard, you perform poorly. Wala ka pang recommendation sa judgment, ha? Judgments are all yes. your Parang yeah. interpretation of the result based on intent versus and outcome outcomes. versus standard, right? Yes. So pag sinabi mong 100% passing ang iyong intent, nakapasa lamang ay uh, 80%. Ang iyong standard ay 100% passing. Siguro hindi ka naman magugusto ng 80% passing lang. Then your judgment is did not achieve the intended mm. passing rate. 
Okay. Naka mo yung yes, sir. yun ang magiging mm -hmm. ano kaya hindi ka mo na maglalagay ng mm -hmm. uh, score should have bearing on their final grade. Ah, Kasi naglalagay just, uh, oh, recommendation already. Sa discussions mo na yun ah, maglalagay okay. ka ng mga ganun. But basically here judgment pa lang. Sa una mo like say dapat ay 12 lectures. Nagawa ba yung observation only 8 lectures ang nakawa. Mm -hmm. Standard all 100% lectures should have been so therefore, ang judgment mo ay you were not able to achieve your intention. Mm. Kasi ganun yung, ah, yung ganun yeah. ng continence, di ba? Yeah. You flow yes. from this, this direction. J interpretation mm. yan eh. Pag nagawa mo dito sa pataas, sa antecedent, then you go into sa pababa, pababa. So, para later on, yung sa ilalim mo, yung ano ko lang ha, yun ang comment ah, ko lang, to improve yeah. on this, na uh, don't, basta ang observation mo ay factual. Mm. Factual data, no, no judgment. Yeah. So palang uh -huh. na failure rate would not affect their overall performance. Yan ba ay observation ay yun ba ay result ng kanilang sumag sumagot pa sila sa isang questionnaire? Wala, wala. Uh, Inasyum mo lamang na hindi naman to makakapek sa aking overall performance. Eh. Yan ba yon? Ah, uh, hindi sir, hindi talaga siya kasama sa. Hindi, ibig sabihin, pero uh, failure rate would not affect their overall. How did you say na it? I know you, I know that that's the case but mm. how did you how did you infer na iniisip nila yon kaya uh, hindi As nila sir, they were uh, rating poorly so they were rating poorly since they were thinking that it will not affect their overall performance But did you ask that if they, you, are you are not are you not giving your are you not serious in taking the test because you, it is not will not affect your grade was this asked Yes yes sir. it was uh, asked Yeah it, how they, was it uh, asked Oh. Um, uh, hindi nila sinseryoso kasi wala siyang bearing. Ah, tinanong mo yun. Bearing. Walang so, bearing sa final score. So, lalagay mo dyan, mm -hmm. uh, observation ay doon sa kanilang assess, yung ano, 60% answered no bearing. Parang gano'n, meron kang pinagkuna ah, ng, pinagkuna ng observation ah, okay, mo. Sir. Kasi yung sinasabi mong ah. uh, judge, ano nun, inaano lang, du, kaya, kaya sabi ko sa'yo kanina, Pwedeng nagbabaliktad yung observation mo at judgment. Okay. Nag-observation. Mm -hmm. And the standards are criteria, criteria. to. Criteria. Yes. So, hindi yung score must be included in their overall performance. Uh, scores must be a basis for promotion. Ang iyong standard ay... Uh, ano yung standard ng passing? Ano yung standard mo ng uh, results? So, ganun ang lahat ng gagawin mo. Mm -hmm. Kung sinasabi mong 100% of the lecture should have been conducted, mm -hmm. then the standard is 100% okay. should be conducted. Okay. Oras na hindi mo na meet yung standard based on the observation, then judgment. the judgment is you fell below the... Damn. So judgment ay... Kaya ang judgment mo lang naman dito, achieve not achieve. achieve eh. uh, Di ba? Mm. Okay, thank you, sir. For the I clarification. Think, so Nem gave a good um, if, um, yes. feedback on that. Um, for the presentation, I think it, it would help for everyone to learn how to... Uh, present using just the import or highlight, highlight the important aspects of your report. Mm -hmm. So for this one, uh, you will you lose your you will lose your audience yeah, with all the words and the tables that you're presenting. Although there were some highlights that you could have actually uh, just given to us. So that that I think that's for everyone to learn also how yeah. to highlight. But anyway, I admire you for going through stakes countenance, <laughs> which is a very tedious process yes, and requires tedious. you to be very um, nitty-gritty um, yeah. of everything. So for your, for your courage, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Congratulations to everybody. You know, uh, I think that was a very fruitful uh, session. Because in the classroom, kami kami lang nag-uusap. Uh, so very. I hope that uh, to all the students, everything will uh, come into place, and that it will help you to produce your final report. <laughs>